Hello. Hello. Sorry, you just caught me mid-tweet there. Jane's <laughs> tweeting. Tonight, obviously, we're talking about something that uh, I mentioned and has caused a bit of a hurrah. I don't know. It's a hoo-ha. A hoo-ha. hoo-ha. On the, uh, well, the we'll be known to all, so we were away in Bournemouth having a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we were away doing our thing, videoing, and we weren't uh, paying any attention to the view from the tower. But a lot of people have been... Uh, explaining what i was saying for me and a lot of people have been sort of um disagreeing with the people that were talking on my behalf so we decided to talk a little bit about fan engagement and what it means to you and what it means to us and so should we start by you guys out there what does fan engagement mean to you because i think it means different things to different people it means something to me, I think different people have different values and expect different things from the club. So what what does fan engagement mean to you? And hello, everybody, by the way. We haven't done the hello. Yeah, hello. hello, everyone. For a while, 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 while we're doing our greetings, just just if you can just pop in the in the chat what you think fan engagement means and what it means to you um, and the things that you like to see. Yeah, um, it doesn't just mean Blackpool fans, it means any <laughs> fan, if anybody's in. We have invited uh, fans from other clubs in to tell us of uh, good experiences they have when they go to grounds, things that makes them want to stay, makes them want to get there early, makes them feel welcome when they, when, when they turn up at the ground. It's this sort of thing we're talking about. Um, I, I've had a couple of... Um, tweets um some, somebody tweeted out how happy they are as long as if as long as the uh, the team are applauding the fans they're happy um I, you know I, I would just say that was a given but never mind it's uh if, if that's what people like then that's fine some people will be happy won't they some people are really happy with the things yeah, that are going on say different different people you know different there's different you know Types of supporters, isn't there? Supporters that that you know can't get to matches uh, for for whatever reason, or or, or don't go to matches who, who watch from home, and their their engagement with the club is uh, more more remote. Or others clubs that just fans that just go to home games, um, and there's fans that go to maybe the odd away game, or there's the you know the 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 the, the uh, nut jobs uh, that that go to like most games or all games, like uh, which it's is. And that's a very different experience. It's a very tough thing to do. You know, I've done it for a, a long time um, with a brief hiatus, of course, during the boycott. Um, and it's really, really tough. Um, and and little things that can enhance the fan experience for me as a as a, a travelling fan it really make the difference. Um, and there's things. There's things that clubs can do to to really actually, yeah, that makes me feel good. makes me feel valued. And for me, fan engagement is about feeling valued uh, by by the club, not necessarily your club or, you know, if you're going to another club, the, the club that you're visiting, do, you know, do they value you? Do they make you feel welcome? Are they aggressive as soon as you arrive? And it, and it affects your spirits on the day because you, you turn up, you know, you've had a nice time, you've been to the pub before the match or whatever and, and you're there and you, you're all high hopes for the match. And then what a steward, for example, says or does can just completely shift your mood as soon as you arrive at the ground. And, and we had this, um, you know, we had this two two completely different experiences last season. Hmm. Um, season before last now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we, went, we went to Doncaster and we went to Rotherham, you yeah. know, two very close clubs um, geographically. The yeah. grounds, both very nice. Stewards, completely different experience. Hmm. We went to Doncaster and it was, you, you were greeted. The minute you walked by in. By stewards. Even before we got to the ground, you know, there was a steward there and we, we were just asked, you know, excuse me, you know, where's the away end? And, and he's like, oh, oh, hello. He addressed us as sir and madam. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Um, and then you get to the gate and, you know, the stewards, you can have a little bit of a laugh and a joke with them. And it's nice. And it puts you in a really good mood. And and we went in and, you know, Lee was doing a little bit of filming. And um, and the steward was like, oh, let me take you to meet Claire. You know, she'll show you all about what we're doing in well, this. My name's Alan. And, and, I, I'll, you know, he was, immediately came over. He's on the video. says, my name's Alan. I'll take you through. I'll show you. I'll show you this fan zone to bring you in there. So he took us into the fan zone. Like she said, he immediately said, oh, Claire's over there. We'll get Claire over to come and speak to you in this lovely 
one lady came over and she was full of enthusiasm. And we're now friends on Facebook because yeah, we they're, like Claire. They're friends with us on Facebook, <laughs> absolutely they are. And they took us over and showed us this little little fan zone thing where you could do play penalty this shootout, so penalty shootout thing. Yeah. So all normally, you know, we have like the playstations for the kids, but we haven't got it tonight. Yeah. And honestly, they were so lovely. And I said this at the time that hmm. I almost felt that they were going to escort me to my seat and fetch me a pie. They were that friendly. They were, you know, and I felt so yeah. valued there and mm. it was wonderful. And they'd, they'd won this, you know, uh, fan engagement team of the year or something. And, and you could see why and it was wonderful. It was really nice and it doesn't cost anything to do that. You know, it's just a nice thing. And we went to Rotherham <clears throat> a couple of months later and, you know, you, you're approaching the ground, and I'm like, "Oh, there's a there's a dog there," and you know, I went to start, and like, "Don't touch the dog." I'm like, "Okay, right, yeah. fine." I thought I'm even frightened to actually take a photo with the dog now for my blog, which I wanted yeah. to do, and then, and then you know, you go in, and then the shoes are just it was just a, a they were very just unfriendly, unpleasant about experience, they, yeah. and, and and for me, you know, fan engagement, the stewards for me have a big part like to play in that. Point of call, aren't and, and, and I'll bring in Bournemouth here as well because um we'll get to the comments by the way we can see there's loads of comments so coming well, yeah. in and we'll get to that uh, soon we'll um, we'll, 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 we'll go through it so, so so Bournemouth we went to Bournemouth and um stepped into the ground and um I needed the loo and I'm looking around completely lost I you know I can't remember where the, the loos are and the steward said to me um excuse me sweetie are you looking for the toilets and I said, oh, yes, thank you. And he said, oh, they're just over there at the other end. I'm like, how mm. lovely was that? And I was so touched that he, he just like, you know, he'd seen I was looking lost. He called me sweetie <laughs> and, and he helped me out. And, yeah. and really that nice. was just, honestly, it was wonderful. And it made me feel so good. Um, so for me, you know, it's, it's little things like that that make me feel, oh, it just really put me in a good mood. And and for me, things like that, that's sort of that's your one sort of part fan of, engagement. Of, I've it's got you know, part, all the things there's that, a lot that more, I want to touch upon. There's a lot but, more, but let's just go through some yeah, comments. Let's see what a lot of people say. are talking. So Hello, everybody. Eugene back. McGeever thinks Blackpool will beat Sunderland um, 4-1 in the FL Cup. So thank you, Eugene, for that. Um, um, Paul... Paul Fowler, Blue Nose, a Birmingham City vlogger, saying hello, hello Lee and Jane. How are you doing? We're fine. Shazza yeah, Harvey is well, here. Hello, you. Shazza. Long time since we've spoken to you. Yes, nice to see you. It's nice to see everybody again, isn't it? Uh, Ryan Dunbar says, why would anybody talk on our behalf? That On behalf, that's not... Well, basically because we weren't answering. <laughs> because we, we weren't answering because we were in Bournemouth. <laughs> we so were they're making up Bournemouth, answers. <laughs> so we didn't even know it was going on. But anyway, it did go on without us, and people then started arguing with the people that were actually defending us, you know, as if they're arguing with us and we weren't actually saying anything. So it was a bit strange. Um, Harry Mogg is here. Hello, Harry. Hello, Glad Harry. we enjoyed our time in Bournemouth. Oh, it was wonderful. He's been worrying really us wonderful. for months and months and months. And when we came to Bournemouth, we we're going to get absolutely battered by this amazing <laughs> team. Well, we did for, for half. We did, we? actually, for the first <laughs> half, yeah. Shazza Harvey says, Bournemouth need to sing. Indeed, they do. Well, praise for the we heard fans. a little bit there, but not a lot. Um, uh, ben Harmon says that uh, fan back. engagement to me is the club support the fans as well yes. as the fans support yes. yeah, the yeah, club. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They they should, and it's it, it's all good. Very they bad. should make you feel welcome and 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 part of the part oh, part of it all, shouldn't they? You know, we're yeah. all together in this. Uh, Harry Mox says Bournemouth fans were embarrassed, were so complacent, and I think the fans have had enough over the past couple of years. We paid the league's highest prices and we see nothing in return. It is a bit weird, but then again, you've only got such a small stadium that I suppose they have to maximise as much as they can because of the size of the stadium. But I, I can understand you are paying incredibly it's high prices. Grateful for what you've got because you've got a wonderful club there and, and is, a wonderful town. It, it does seem really nice. People. Right. Um, Shazza Harvey says away games have a better atmosphere. Is yes. that than Bloomfield Road? Is that, that what you're saying? Yeah, maybe, but Just can agree on with that. you on that. Yeah. Um, I think the atmosphere is pretty good at Bloomfield Road, if I'm being honest. Um, fan engagement means having a philosophy on identity and having a proper custodian who is looking after our club. Well, we've certainly got that, haven't we? We certainly have got a proper moment. custodian. We can't complain about Simon Sadler and the job he's doing. He's definitely, marvellous. Definitely taking the club in the right direction, that's for sure. Michael Stewart Hague is here saying, Evening Lee and Jane, hope you're keeping well in the box of choice we we trust. I mean, cool. we're expecting a lot of different answers here because because people have different sure. values in life, and people like, oh, you know, some people might be like, oh, everything's wonderful. Uh, I'm really happy. Uh, some people will be like, oh, you can't say anything bad against the club. And some people will be like, actually, this isn't 
having okay. a few bad experiences as we'll yeah. uh, as we'll touch on in a minute uh, random Dunbar says fan, fan engagement to me is when clubs interact with fans on a daily basis if need if not a weekly basis from a manager from a range point of view our fan engagement this season has been absolutely woeful oh, really? well they are that's ranges so it's not just blackpool um I, i'm not sure if the club have to interact with fans on a daily basis that would be maybe it, it, it would be I nice to know. I think do you think every day they, they, well, that's something you know they do do something most that days. maybe some people do expect especially the, the remote fans maybe would expect that i mean they do, they do tweet don't they every day they do tweet. even if it's just a token on this day this happened or yeah you know so there is there is you know certainly daily contact going out isn't there yeah Brian Thompson evening Lee Jane loving the new set by the way thank oh, you very, thank you very much. much yes we've nice been working you, hard on that Stephen Woolley says completely off topic but never mind what did John Jules play like <laughs> Lee is is Lavery a better player um we're very excited about Lavery John Jules we're not excited about him but yet he's, 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 but he's, a, he's a work a in progress project, so yes. we're not going to like start slagging him off because young lad and um you know, he's, seen enough of him yet, he's really. coming into kind of do a for me. They kind of want to do this sort of Ellis Sims role. Or it's the quite Darren dramatic at going and, down, isn't he? He is quite dramatic, <laughs> and he got booked for it as well. Which <laughs> I, I thought it was a, I, I thought it was yeah. a penalty, to be honest. Probably more of a penalty than actually the. <laughs> the actual penalty, if I'm being honest. Uh, Harry Mogg says our fans were class on Saturday, one of the best I've ever seen at Dean Court. Yeah, we, we it was one of the best oh, we've That's ever really seen. Nice it, it was incredible. Yeah. It's great, isn't it? Because I think we've seen some some great fans come to Bloomfield Road as well, and um, the commentary fans. They didn't stop singing when when they come to Blackpool yeah. in, in the week, and, and I think we do sing. I think part of it is because we've all been stuck indoors for so long, and now we actually can go out and we can meet up with our mates and we can sing, and we're just so joyful about that. Yeah. And I think I think there's a big element of that in why you know yeah. why these away um, followings are just so vocal at the moment. It's just wonderful and joyous that we can travel and we can. You know, it's, it's, it's great. And also we sang when we went two down as well. And we got louder when we went two down, which is always good to see, to try and lift the team, which is what the fans are about. We're there to lift the team and, you know, they lift us and they haven't really done that at Bloomfield Road. You know, they haven't lifted the crowd at Bloomfield Road because they haven't really, you know, got out of the traps yet. So it's it's not been quite as good. It's at a shame Road. really because the one performance that, that did do that was the, the cup game when there was only the two sides open. I don't know, Scorn, on your question, who do I think will play tomorrow? I've no idea because I, I would imagine he's probably going to try some It'll be a different team, won't it? It'll be trying people mm -hmm. out. So I have no idea. And I, I really in, in I trust on all that sort of stuff. Um, Ryan actually says he's talking during the week prior to matches. Our supporters liaison officer at Rangers is only in the job because of who his father is. Uh, for me, St. Johnson is great away support. Okay. Um, Ben Harmon says, uh, hey ben. fan entertainment to me is the club supporting the fans as well as the fans supporting the club. I think as a club, any tickets left unsold on the 12th hour should be given to fans on hard times and oh, schools. Yeah, that's, nice that's a great idea. idea yeah, um, maybe one for the community trust there. Yeah. Somebody suggested that uh, any unemployed uh, could, could be offered to come in and help do jobs. And if they did, they could be given free tickets to come. Yeah, the match. that's a nice idea. I thought that well, was quite, quite a good idea as well. Uh, Shazza Harvey says, how was our weekend in Bournemouth? It was, it was amazing and we will get yeah, yeah. the video out as soon as we can you've probably seen the you know the, the actual match video but the weekend video but there's no real time problem on that it's just we, it, these take a lot of time to do but they'll be there forever and ever for other fans to see and stuff so the, the time on that doesn't really matter quite as much as actually getting the match out um harry mox says shazza we expect protests at bournemouth soon most are insulated that we've had to pay the leagues uh insulted would that be that we have to pay the league's high prices not to win having me tune up against all respect a league one promotion Ooh, club well that's really well we are on a level playing field we are in in in, in, in you know league uh terms aren't we so it's um we're a good team honestly we're, we're, we're think, not that bad you know, give, give us a little bit of credit where credit's due there because we did show a lot of fight and a lot of character to come back from we that did and, uh, we did no, we're not. Uh, we could have won it actually. We could have had a, a goal in the first half as well. Uh, Stephen Cram says, Hello, Lee and Jane. Great result at Bournemouth. The Rich is a point, two good away points, but hopefully the home form will pick up. Well, it, yeah. it, it is a hope. It's really hard this to actually reach that. I don't know. This is not the best. I'm a bit too far away. This table wants to come a bit that way, doesn't it? That's, I think that's the thing. Um, Harry Mogg says the same thing happened last season when we lost to Wickham. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, good evening to Hello, Lee BFC. Hello. Um, Ryan says he's glad he wasn't involved he would have defended well a, a lot of people do defend us and it was very nice of anybody on a view from the tariff they did kind of stick up for us um, you know and you know, there's obviously the odd you know there's the odd 
to become a person, the odd person that, uh, you know, never has anything nice to say about us at any, at any time and don't like what we do. Don't watch what we do, but don't like what we do. And I and maybe watched it when we first started, which was like a few years ago. When we were when, a bit shit. When, when, <laughs> admittedly, we were, sh you know, shit. I, I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, if you compare the videos that we made at the very start and the videos that we make now, they're completely different. But behind, behind my what I wanted to do with this channel is is exactly the same back then as it is now. And what I've always wanted to do is try and help the club get more people to come in to the game. So I've always tried to show the good and the great. And as much as I can show good and great, I will. And I will try my best to get more bums on seats and to help the football club in any way I can. It's a, it's a similar reason to why, I mean, I've, I've always written about Blackpool. Um, you know, I used to write about them in, in class at school and yeah. I've written in the Gazette and in the match program on the fanzine and so on. I've got my blog now. But the reason that I do that and it, it is... Because I get so much joy uh, dealing with the camera at the moment, so I'm holding the fort. Alan says, as regards online engagement, it must be so difficult for every club to please everybody. I love your channel, but also like lots of others. The problem is it's so saturated now. But it's great, but it's like, you know, it's just like normal telly, isn't it? We used to just have BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, and now there's there's choice and you can you can watch what you like. And I think it's it's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, the more choice, the better, isn't it? Not a problem with that. You know, it's like there's, there's different... You know, the, the the different Blackpool, you know, we're sort of like the, you know, the ITV version, but there'll be another one that's a bit, you know, more BBC and, you know, oh, they, 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 all, you know they cater to, it's not necessarily the same <laughs> market. The bin, but there we go. <laughs> another bin in the background. Right? I, I don't know why. It's totally <laughs> so, nice. John Lysis, thank you everyone for watching Jane Stewart TV. Uh, yeah, Jane no, Stewart uh, Audio thank gone now as us. well. Back. Yeah, great. Uh, Blackpool Bible says, AVFTT. Hello, Blackpool Bible, by the way. AVFTT is the most toxic forum I've ever seen. It's bad isn't it yeah i've stopped going on that not been on for a long time people will always find something to moan about what we've got is this club but it's true but the thing is though it is sort of a reflection of society isn't it you know there are people on there that you wouldn't have a drink with and they just pop up because it's a forum and and they're there you know you can control who's on your twitter and who's on your facebook but you know i think you can block people on avftt but not not like properly you can ignore them can't you but uh, you can't yeah but you can't like them sort you of can't thing, sort can't. of like shut them out of your life like you can on facebook and twitter so it's just we do try but it's you know but there's also you know a lot of very good people on there as well so it's, it's it, it serves a purpose you know um oh he's retracted that now but i've read it out so what's that <laughs> um, um it's fine now. Back on. Great. Uh, Same channel. Nice. Jane Stewart TV was a smashing success during the tech problems. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, the training session is totally fair. I mean, the training session is a brilliant thing. And that's a sort of, it, it, that was great how, they've, how that's come out just just on the day we're doing this. So obviously. Reese Jefferson makes says. You wonder if that's a coincidence. Reese Jefferson says, don't even mention Arsenal. They're shit. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. right, that's him pointing his flags. Uh, Brian says, I get it, Jane. Very well explained. There's a huge opportunity here. And they need to make the most of it for a better now and a better future. We need to embrace the potential lost generation. Yeah. And it's, I, I really do think that it's not like, you know, I almost feel sometimes that it's like, well, you know, my name's not Oyston, so I'm good. And and I think there's a lot of sort of group think mentality with Blackpool fans. It's like mm. Oyston bad, Sadler good. But actually, it's not black and white. You know, I'm not I'm not dissing Simon Sadler. You know, he's he's, we'll he's, he's we, love we love him. him. He's he's doing a fantastic job. Mm. It's wonderful. But you know, there are some areas perhaps where that that, that could be improved um and and you what know are and, your gripes? have you gone into your gripes about the you know the ticket fiasco um is, no is, 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 it's, it's, it's really sort of, sort of from, following on from what i was saying before about feeling valued do i feel valued as a blackpool fan right now or do i feel it's just expected of me that i buy my season ticket and i spend money in the club shop do I, what 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 a blackpool football club doing to make me feel valued and i'm not you know, talking as, as you know, I think I'm anything special. I'm just as a human being mm -hmm. in, in life in general. Um, and I'll give you an example, an outside of football example. Um, so I went for an eye test the other week at Boots Opticians. Um, I've been with Boots for years. Used to be down in, in Walsall. I've, I've transferred to the Blackpool branch because I've moved up here. And I went for an eye test and I got home and 
I, I saw I got an injury to my eye and I, oh, I didn't have that because it's hurting a bit. I'll just have a look at this. I got an injury to my eye. So I rang up Boots and I said, well, there was a dent in your eye, yeah, wasn't there? Yeah, there was a like, dent in my eye. She asked me to look eye. at it. There was, a, there, there, was a, there was like a dent in her eye. That hadn't been there. It was, it was hurting. So I rang up the opticians and I said, you know, I've been for this eye test. I was frightened. And I said, I've been for my eye test this afternoon. Um, you know, there's an injury to my eye. Could I, could I come back and, and have someone have a look at it, please? And she said, well, we should sit in 10 minutes. I said, oh, okay. Um, but, you know, I, my eye was fine. I, I just, I'd been in at lunchtime. I had an eye test. That This injury's happened during the eye test. You know, I was just, you know, would you be able to just stay open for, for just 10 minutes? So I could so, well, no, we should sit in 10 minutes. And we've got no appointments tomorrow either. I'm like, oh, right, okay. Then she said, well, if, if you're that worried about it, get to the walk-in centre or, or the hospital. I'm like, that was so rude. And not only have you injured my eye, but you've been rude to me when I've, I've rang up frightened. Um, so I no, so that's a not. perfect of, of, of example of, it's, of not it's, good of not, not feeling service. valued. And that, that's sort of an, an outside of football example of like, mm. well, you're nothing to us. Fuck off. I'm like, well, you fuck off. I'm not giving you my business anymore. I'm yeah, sorry. So, so and I found, to a, <laughs> I found a nice little optician who's a black yeah, so ball fan. Lost quid a month in concert lens go, and... go along there and chat to him about football and, you know, and, 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 and it's going to feel valued and I feel loved. And that's, it's a thing that I want in life. You know, it's not football specific. It's not, I think I'm anyone special. It's don't treat me like that. <laughs> You can't treat me like that and try and fold me up for thirty pound advantage guard vouchers. I'm sorry, but some things are more important. And mm. and and for me, you know, do I feel valued as a Blackpool fan by by the football club? What what? No, I don't feel like I felt at Bournemouth when I had that steward saying to me, you know, oh, you, you lost, sweetie. The toilet's just over there. I don't feel valued like I did at Doncaster when I felt like you know they were going to escort me to the table to my seat and, and bring me a pie. Um, and I don't feel valued like at Bristol City when they had all the, you know, they had all the fan zone and even, and they had all the, you know, the bars, the, the music. And it's like they want the fans there from one o'clock drinking, listening to the live music. Um, and, and as a Bristol City fan, you would be there at one o'clock enjoying all that with your mates, being at the club, just being there, you know, giving giving the club your money. Um, and, and even, Carlisle, you know, they've got a little fish and chip fan mm. outside the ground because, you know, let's face it, the food that you get in football grounds is limited. And I think they are limited to what they can do. But clubs now are learning, you know, just have, you know, hire out a spot. Fish and chip van comes. You can go and have some fish and chips. You arrive at the ground early, have some fish and chips. Takes the pressure off yeah. the refreshment kiosks in the ground as well. And you walk in with your fish and chips. Oh, happy, you know, mm. gravy on it. it. It was brilliant. And it's it's just these things that, that I'm experiencing at other clubs that make me feel valued by these other clubs. Mm. Um, and it's just, I just feel. And I'll tell you what triggered this, actually um because people have been having a go at lee about this on the board but it's me really <laughs> um these the, the the minutes of these um supporters uh, what they call these meetings that they the that, the that, times, that they have with their fans got me in trouble. and um uh. and they're, what they call the fans liaison the, the yeah, structured the fans, dialogue, structured dialogue meetings and there was something in the minutes uh, uh, there's always something in the minutes that just drives me mad and there was something in the last minutes which was basically um, fans were volunteers were going down to the ground and they were painting this room for They've been allowed to paint, haven't they? I think we, we, we've allowed fans to paint <laughs> but, but the, but our the, stadium but for I can't us. remember who it was. Great fan engagement. I yeah, yeah, they said that the, the fact that the, 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 the fans are in painting this room is it's a great example of fan engagement. And I'm like, that's not no, fan engagement. No, that's not that what fan engagement fan means to me. No. I don't think it's what fan engagement means to fans. I've asked you what you think fan engagement is. You don't think it, you know, it's not giving you the club your labour. Do, 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 you <laughs> do you as fans want to go in and start doing a bit of painting in Bloomfield Road? And would you think that was fan engagement? But because it's the just, club clearly think it is it's just and like, like jane was going mental think, about it if they think that's what fan engagement is <laughs> this is really honestly it really triggered me like she if they think that's what fan engagement is that explains a hell of a lot <laughs> just uh, living on different parts of us and, 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 and we'll, we'll just go back to the comments well, let me say a few things i yeah, mean obviously um obviously i'll try and get um just you know, we've read through the thread on a view from the tower and, and somebody uh you know said obviously sam has said you know lee's upset about something and he's having a rant because the club have upset him and it'll probably be because simon sadler's come and say stop using your camera and all that sort of stuff but let me just 
quell that rumour for a start off and just tell you how nice the club were about all this. We were going to the ground, um, you know, filming a year or so ago. I'm doing little interviews with fans, you know, on the side of the pitch at half time and filming bits of the game and, you know, wandering around the ground, getting the players coming out and stuff. And there was this steward that was uh, like rounding up his stewards to to kind of follow me around to make sure to see what I was doing. And, and um, he, he was, you know, talking at somebody down at the front had heard him over as saying that they were going to confiscate me camera and all this sort of thing. So I uh, said to Jane, this doesn't sound very good. So we uh, contacted Steve Rowland, who's the club uh, uh, SLO, and said to him, you know, is there a problem? And if there is a problem and, you know, we shouldn't be doing this, we don't want to be doing it because we don't want to be doing it all in secret and, you know, and being afraid of being attacked at any moment and camera banned. taking off us, you know, and banned from the ground. So we asked him and we said, is it okay? You know, are the club okay with it? If they're not okay with it, you know, we, we don't need to do it. We can, you know, we can just do, you know, player interviews and all the sort of things we were doing and uh, got a nice uh, email back from Steve saying, no, the club are perfectly fine. They know what you do and they're happy and they will have a word with the stewards and they had a word with the stewards for us. And, and they've been fine. And they've, they've been, been absolutely nice fine since. So nobody's coming over to us. Simon Sadler isn't going to come along and say, please, Lee, stop. Uh, you know, the, they do sort of, you know, see what, what, what we do and, you know, it's, for the love, you know, the, the you know, the reason we do it is, you know, we often say it's for those Joy. exiles who, who, are, who are away for, from the, you know, can't get to the games to give them a really a feeling of what it's like to go to a game. If I'm being honest, and I've said this quite a few times, I don't really enjoy you know, video in the game because I'm because I, it stops me. You know, when everybody's going bonkers and it, 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 like Bristol, and I'm trying to hold my camera straight and not go bonkers and show everybody going bonkers and try and it, it's hard. You know, I'd rather be going absolutely mental with everybody else. So there's a part of it that that I, I don't enjoy and. And that's not what I started doing this channel for. You remember, I went down to clean the seats at Bloomfield Road. I went down to interview the people who were cleaning the seats and, you know, to get people excited about the fact we we're going back on, on you know, you know, to kind of get more thousands joining in and get buying tickets and going to the homecoming game. And all through that summer, I did, you know, pitch reports. And the pitch reports I was doing was... Game momentum. Was, was just trying to get people enthusiastic about what was going on at Bloomfield Road and to start buying season tickets. Because because Jane and I want thousands and we, we want the ground packed out week in, week out. We're mad Blackpool fans and we're trying to help the club wow. in any way we can. And if people see on our videos that it's a wonderful thing and, and you're looked after, then we'll, we'll show it. But we're not showing it because we're not looked we're after. We're not feeling it. We're not <laughs> feeling that. And we don't feel that the club kind of get us in a way and you know not we don't want to interview critsley or anything like that or interview players but you know anything that's good you know anything that's going on that's really good we're happy to talk about it aren't well, we? that's all we want to talk about yeah, we only want to talk about the good stuff but you know things things can can be better and we'd love them to be better and, if we and go to the ground and they've just brought out the best cheese and onion pie i've ever tasted in my life and I, one, <laughs> I will be doing a video on yeah. that best cheese and onion pie if a steward <laughs> walks up to jane as we come in the ground and says hi lovey just call oh, me you, a pet name looking, i'm happy I mean, remember, <laughs> We went to Reading and the steward there oh, just yeah. uh, as she walks up with a bag and they were like checking the bag. She says, Oh, hi, darling, you're looking lovely today. And immediately it's, she was like, We really, really like Reading, don't we? Yeah. So if if we got that, <laughs> we're gonna talk about it. We when we went into the ground a few weeks ago, there was a steward, uh, uh a lady who watches our channel all the time. She went, oh my God, this is Charles TV. She was like a steward and she was like, couldn't control herself. She was so excited. So I said to her, you know. Do you want to be on? Do I say something? She said, oh, no, I'd lose my job if I said something. So I couldn't put her on the video. I couldn't show you what a lovely steward she is because she's not allowed to talk on video to us about, about anything. So that's a bit disappointing. Yeah. Do you just, want me to go just there with Squires game? I mean, just, just, just going back to, to, to Stuart, you know, we're just going to go back to the comments, um, actually. Okay, because we'll go back to the top comments. Just so, um, so we've got Harry. That's what we're about. Yeah. That's what we do. That's why we do it. And we're creative. Jane was saying before, we're both creative people. So, uh, uh, you know, we, we like Jane likes creating and writing her blogs, and she does that because it's a passion. I like making videos. I love it. I like editing, and I love the whole thing when it comes out, and it looks amazing. I'm very proud of it, and I get 
I get a big sense of pride when people enjoy it and watch it. And there's loads of people watch it and people telling me it's fantastic. But at the end of the day, it's all to help my love, my passion in life, which is Blackpool Football Club. It's been like my love throughout my whole life. It's the thing that I've adored all the time. But I want more people to go. I want it to be busier. I want us to get promotion. I want us to get better players. And that's what I do it all for. And, anyway, back, back and I the... think because we are creative and, and we're at the ground sort of with a half a mind on what you know what I'm going to write I'm always thinking about what I'm going to write in my blog all day and because of I'm in that zone I'm observing more things and perhaps I notice things that other people don't notice um because I, I'm in the you know I'm like I want to share all this joy and I'm making mm. notes in my little notebook and things so you know perhaps it, perhaps maybe we are a little bit more sensitive to things that, 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 than other people because because we're in that observation mode i suppose we're trying to show good things aren't we it's Absolutely. like what the bible said oh the stewards are awful at bloomfield road a lot of them are nothing less than a group of thugs well we don't we don't want them to be like that we well the stewards we would be slagging I them mean, off the, the, if the we were coming to bloomfield stewards, road we would be on our video slagging them wouldn't we for me there are three uh, three levels of stewards from from what i've observed um over the last you know since we've been back yeah. um and, and and you know the season before last yeah is that you've got your your positive steward experience, which is like we had at Bournemouth with the love of the guy, like we had at Doncaster with our friend now, new friend Claire. Um, th then they just bring you joy. They're so lovely, and and you know you do get that at a number of clubs, and it's wonderful. It really ha enhances the fan experience. Yeah. You've got like your neutral um, steward experience, which I think is where Blackpool sit. Um, and it, Bristol City were the some same good, as well, some bad. where you don't really notice the stewards. They just they just do what they do and you don't really have any interaction with them and that, that's fine um but then you, you have your negative steward experience mm. like we had at, you know at rotherham um, mm. and morecambe as well we morecambe. went to morecambe oh for gosh. a pre-season friendly don't and, get me started on and they i mean i don't know who they were and i, I was encouraged by the fact that they were They're actually a security company, they, they were recruiting stewards they did put an advert out to, that they were recruiting stewards so i don't know if these were, were just happy. a temporary I think, I think said, measure we were looking um, for happy people but they were they would just look like you know they did look like bouncers. dogs like bouncers and they were there and you could tell they got like the you know the prison warder eyes and they're looking they're looking for a fight they're looking for a fight and i'm yeah. like why why yeah. are you like that this is a pre-season friendly we're here to have fun and like you know i'm looking i'm looking for trouble you there you and we're like, joining a queue don't, we're joining a queue at morecambe which is miles long and there's some stewards out there that are like the gestapo aren't they yeah. and then they've got a fan and they're sort of like passing him down they're strip. practically strip searching they strip, it's strip ridiculous strip search. yeah they were strip searching and they started getting to take his clothes on in front of everybody and i thought they were going to put him down on the floor you know and, I, <laughs> and I, I, in my mind i was seeing that american thing you know where they, you know when they've got that guy and got the, you know the knee on his head and everything they've got him down it, it was it was that scary it was unbelievable they stopped me uh, because i had a, I had a bag and then you know they found I had, you know the little lav mics you know that that i put on people so you can hear them when we're doing interviews they say can't bring recording equipment into the ground and i had to wait 15 minutes for this to this like head steward to come over and actually you know i spoke to him i said i showed him the lav mics explained to him you know the, these these mics are to put on people's jacket so so that when i'm talking to them you know and interviewing them at half time you can hear them that you know they're not mics to record to, to do any sort of audio record they're just purely for the interviews and he said oh yeah fine absolutely but i missed 15 minutes of the game but, but Bournemouth, because of that Bournemouth, you know they were strict you know they went and they get they give you the i don't know some handheld metal detector or something yeah. they did and then you had to go over to somebody else and they search your bag and, and i had a frisk and i always like a frisk and i said oh yeah i feel like i'm on holiday i felt like i'm on holiday all weekend but i definitely yeah. do now i'm having a frisk and <laughs> they had a little bit of a laugh and a joke and they were just nice about it and yeah it's not you know they can do the job but but not be dicks you know and so so for me there's there's that three level of stewarding and i think you know blackpool are, are in the middle at the moment um, semi charm i so this is a fun a fascinating topic the thing about feeling valued hadn't asked myself that before jane was saying one of the mm. things as well that we wanted to talk about and if you mentioned it already but when there's there's nothing at bloomfield road that encourages to, you to get into the ground early yeah this is a question that i did put actually you know, there's nothing um, that makes you think oh i'll tell you what <laughs> I'll get there for half past one because there's nothing going on. And we were thinking of, uh, obviously, the experience we've had at Bristol City was absolutely, it was bloody amazing, honestly. You went in, I know they can't have this year at Bloomfield Road because the other stand's not built. And when we understand that, but I'm, I'm just trying to give people, an, you know, you've probably seen it on, on, on the video of, of what they had. So people were there from one o'clock because there was so much entertainment going on. You you had to be there, didn't you? Yeah, and there was a band, there was, there was a, a cider stall, a beer stall. 
had to go in. Um, you had to go through a gate to get into this. So it was like you, if you can imagine you Wembley, the where you've got like the you know the, the big sort of outside concourse yeah. around, and they got the the beer store, the cider store. They got a, a live band. They got some games going on. I think yeah, as well. with like Sky or some sort of you know they had all like and they had a, parties and stuff. Fish and chip band, band, fish and chip um, bands, like food more, bands. More, more, and more, this more. was all external to the ground. And then on one corner of the ground, they had this massive um, sports support bar. sports bar. Yeah, it was uh, which had a, it had a, you know, it had the bar behind the bar. There was a massive screen showing the the Rangers yeah. match, um, and you can have. Like, I think they had pizza and stuff in there as well. They sold yeah. like proper, you know, real ale, my yeah, kind of drinks. Like and and it, was it was all marvelous. honestly, it was just like dream world because I mean, all that money is going into Bristol City. You know, it they're going to be making a fortune, be and all the well. bars were open afterwards as well. So you could stay, you know, meet all your mates, have a drink, you know, at the yeah. ground. And but you know, the, sort of one, one of the other questions that, that that I had really put to you was what would encourage you to to arrive at a ground early? Because well, we've got a few suggestions. Because we talk about it, because we? for me. Um, you know, obviously Bristol City was was pretty sensational. You know, Carlisle, they got the, the fish and chip van, so I knew that, that was there for yeah. me to go to. Yeah. But at Blackpool, again, there the just there just isn't anything. The, the only reason you arrive early at Blackpool is because there might be some big queues and you want to avoid Yeah, those. you're trying to avoid a queue. But uh, for me, you, you go into the ground, um, you know, there's, there's already queues for the refreshments, but for me, the refreshments could be improved. I don't eat there um, no. be because of... of the, well, for the, two reasons. One, one but, it's not all that Well, because of the, the queues and, the and queues because of the quality and, and there, there's, there's work that, that could be done there. Um, you know, they well, could... they had things, didn't they? You remember, they, you know, they started bringing in bottle bars and there was a bookies in there. There's None of that's there. There's enough. a lot of space. But here's a couple of things that you've stand. probably forgotten about what we're talking about uh, that, that we think would, you know, probably help help encourage people to get in a bit earlier and also get in their seats earlier because this is one of the problems we've noticed quite a lot of times that you know the fans are still you know all behind the scenes not coming out i know there's a thing where you can't drink with a beer when you come out so fans will stay behind so eating you know drinking a beer and they, you know they can't bring it out on, onto the pitch get that but a lot of fans are not coming out and because there's no sort of there's nothing to entice you out and jane was saying you know you they could do some. There could be some sort of entertainment. You know, you could have a former player on the pitch being interviewed and all that. But then, but then I said that the PA system, uh, and this is a, a major gripe of mine, and it really, really is just rubbish. And I know we've sorted out. There's been lots of things to sort out. But Simon Sadler, if you're listening to this, and if you went to Bournemouth, you must have heard their PA system and how wonderfully clear it was. It's on it, the list. Isn't it, it wasn't to do. like it. it, it it wasn't like Rotherham's, which was too loud. It was like ridiculous, where you couldn't actually hear yourself think. This was crystal clear. And if, if I was to say to Simon Sadler, I would have a chat with Bournemouth and say, which company supplied that and, and how much did you pay? And Because we want that in there. Because we in the South Stand, and it may be okay on the West. I did think it was a little better. In the Tony Parr may sound okay in the West, but trust me, in the South, Norman Collier. it is Norman Collier. We couldn't tell a bloody word he was saying at the last game. Not a thing. Honestly, it, it, it was there was less. It was like a bit of a word missing. We just honestly, it, it was horrendous. Like it was cutting out every five seconds. So you couldn't even have that entertainment at half time because you wouldn't be able to hear it. If Charlie Adam was on the pitch talking mm. about his life. No, we're not talking about half time. We're talking about before. Yeah, before the, the game. So some, cause if the club, some sort of entertainment. If the club want fans in the ground early and they don't want the concourse, it's not safe really for the concourse well, to be too busy. Then, you know, put something out, you know, pitch side to, 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 to entertain us maybe, yeah. uh, you know, maybe whether it's an interview with, or, say the PA system does restrict that really, but or could the community trust come up with some activities? Cause we are the community and we are in the ground and around the ground, or, yeah. you know, all the things maybe. I've that also been talking about, you know, for me, and I don't know if, if this is a possibility at all at the moment, but the North stand and we've been in a few times, the concourse is really really small and it's really really small because the oysters put a uh, put everything like they sold all these massive big units at the back of the north stand on, on the ground floor huge they they've got a nursery in there which to be honest with you you know for me i don't get the nursery i, I know it probably brings in income but for me if they took that nursery out and turned that into a a bar at the back of the North Stand could probably have a band in on a Saturday before the game. We'll get people into that stand early. 
They could have, um, it could open out sort of with doors into the North Stand so that the North Stand wouldn't be so cramped behind and all the people at half time could go down and have a drink. And I've been a DJ and I, I've worked at uh, the DW Stadium quite a lot of times. I've done school balls, I've done um, like take that nights, I've done weddings. And they have two big massive venues at either end of the of, of the stadium, which is where that would be. And, and they're huge and Bands can just, they're on the ground floor, so bands can just roll the gear in. It's not, you know, lighting companies can come. They could have amazing entertainment there behind the North Stand. And for me, I think that would do a lot for fan engagement and would make the North Stand a, a much more pleasurable place to go. And even still, if they had stuff going on after the game, it might stop everybody going out and looking for trouble at the end of the game. So for me, I think that nursery... I don't know how long the contract is for or whatever, but if, if if I was, you know, in charge of the club, that would be my number one get rid of and get something in there for the fans. And I think we would love that. I think we would love it. I really Just do. back to the comments. Uh, I've, got, I've got like 20 minutes of, of comments to rattle through here. So Harry Mogg says, wow, you don't well see Bournemouth by Dorchester. We only played five league games there. As I was like, ground wasn't ready. Oh, really? <laughs> Gosh, I did not know that. <laughs> oh, the training session is free, says Lee BFC. Oh, that's yes. good. Don't hope for much at Forest then, says Luke Turton. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the food's not good. Okay, well, uh -huh. well, it'll be in our review if it is, if it's no good. Um, as I went to the Dorchester game, we won 1-0. Uh, I, I thought he was listening to a, an audio broadcast where you were because we had a bit of a problem uh -huh. with the um, with the Magewell again, so we had to change it for the camera. Oh, principal tickets. <coughs> Train session free. Principal tickets entry via turnstiles. Turnstiles? Oh, so is it at the, is it at the ground? There you are, you see. Harry Mogg says, <laughs> um, food at football. See, this is, I was talking about this before to you, wasn't I? Food at football ought not to be limited. I've watched a game at San Jose Earthquakes in the MLS in America, and they have so many different kinds of foods on sale. They're far better than what we get. And also, if you go to sort of like a baseball game or something like that in America, they come around, don't they, with pretzels and drinks and all that sort of and you can buy them from sort of like almost like usherettes going around, can't they? And then and, and maybe that could be sort of a, a way of getting food to, to fans rather than have everybody piled down and you can't, you know, you've no chance, have you? Of getting well, the thing is that South Stand, food. that South Stand is big enough to have different outlets. I mean, they used to have it that um, macros it, in there, didn't they? Yeah, that, that didn't but it work. Didn't work but, but I think it was the wrong market. I think they were just in the wrong market with football fans. And but I, th know, I, th I certainly think from all fitness from what books. I've I've observed this season, certainly having these the food outlets outside the ground. I know we've got that burger van by the north, but I mean like just decent food. But we, you know we're human beings. We we yeah. don't just want cold mushy pies. Hey, so you, know? you wouldn't mind doing maintenance at Bloomfield Road. It'd be a privilege. <laughs> well, thank you. That's great, Aid. If you want to get your paint paint brush well, out. Well to and, be fair, I mean you do feel you do feel involved because you know when I was at, at, at Chase and this is another thing to be honest with me that that's probably um colouring my perspective on this is that, that I did spend a number of years in non league and it's a completely different animal you know you do feel valued you yeah, feel you every supporter who comes through the turnstiles at non-league is is valued and yeah, and i've come from that background and to come back to to what i've come back to it's you know it's i'm finding it particularly hard and, and i've been going down squires gate um we'll, we'll be going down um yeah. in the fa cup next saturday um you know, they're, they were always that, and, and that's a different experience completely again because you know, like the manager will say hello to me, and the, the, the lady in the um, in the refreshment, you know, the clubhouse. You, you know, you go up and order something once, you go back at half time, you're oh, all same again, love. And it's 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 mm. god, I just feel so cherished there. And they're like, oh, you know, would you write something for our match program? We, you know, that'd be yeah. brilliant, and mm. and it's just. It's 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 a completely different experience, and and actually, I was quite um, you know, I can see myself going down that avenue. To be honest, well, it's been a struggle to keep you to go to Block Battle this year, aren't you? Yeah, you, you really I mean, didn't want to go, and you were no. really kicking off with me and I and City that you keep going. Which Jane wanted to go to Squires Gate this season and just forget Blackpool. She was so upset about a few well, things. Um, but we have done. Um, we have done some non, you know, you probably, if you watch our channel, we've done the non-league diaries when, you know, when we could, when we couldn't go to football and we could get to non-league games. We, we went and did some non-league and, and Jane took me along to non-league and the experience for myself, um, you know, from going down to make a feature on them, they were, they couldn't do enough 
for us. You know, they were they were so happy we were there. They were arranging interviews with managers after the game. They were, uh, you know, they, they made us, you know, interviewing even stewards, with, sorting out car park, whatever. They had, you know, the media guy. They had everybody was bursting to come along and tell us all about how wonderful their club was. And of course, if you've ever watched the non-league videos that we do, they're amazing because of that. You know, because of because of what they wanted us to do, the videos are, are, are the best videos I've ever done. And they're the videos I'd love to make. I appreciate I can't make those kind of videos with, with Blue for Roll, but they do they do make you feel incredibly welcome and, and and loved. And we don't get that. We don't get that, but we also understand, and you know, I, I've read on lots of things on the forums that people are just happy that the fact that we're in the championship. Absolutely. Happy that we're seeing good football. Absolutely. Mm. Um, you know, happy that they're putting investment in, happy that they're sorting out the stadium, they got rid of the rust and all that sort of stuff is absolutely wonderful. But it's like Jane was saying, if somebody comes along to Bluefield Road who's never been before, mm -hmm. what would make them come back? Yeah. How do you pin down that floating fan? Yeah. Now, obviously, good football is, 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 you know, and probably Ben Mansford would come on this and say, look, if, you know, if we're not winning games, we lose fans and it's important to the club to get a good team and survive in this league and, and have you watching enjoyable football. And absolutely. But what we're not, we're not really talking about the football. You know, we're trying no, to talk about everything else other than yeah. we get the football. But the, fan experience. but the trouble is, if the football does go bad, and there is no fan Which engagement, always does. and they don't look after us, then they'll lose more than they'll keep. Because because we've done it before, you know, I mean, for a different reason. We know it's not like, oh, I've been, I haven't, fans, I haven't missed it? a game for, you know, 13 years or whatever. Actually, no, I realise now that there is something else I can be doing on a Saturday. There, There's another club down the road that would absolutely love me to be going there and it would make me feel so welcome and it's a damn sight cheaper and they're not charging £20 for a friendly, which is another... Um, Non-fun uh, engagement. And, another point, really, that, that, that I, I, I will um, I will address while... Because <laughs> it was something that, that really was. shocked me, the price of that Rangers friendly for £20 a ticket for a friendly. Oh, no. um, I, I, I appreciate that the club... Hasn't had any income for a long time. Well, neither have we. But, yeah, but, but, fans, yeah, but no, neither, Black, neither have we. And you know, Blackpool, a lot of people work in the holiday industry. There's been no hotels open. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people really, really struggling now. in Blackpool. So the club may say they were struggling, but the fans have also been struggling. And we're not, you know, it's not an affluent town, is it? It's yeah. not a town full of money. It's, it's a very, very poor town. It's probably the poor, well, I don't know if it is actually rated as the poorest town in the country. And... I don't know whether they're really taking that into account. I know it's hard for them. I know it's been hard for them, but it's been equally as hard for everybody else because they're not the only ones that have been stuck in COVID. So have we. And we've had, you know, 18 months at home watching matches on iFollow, which hasn't cost a great deal. And now all of a sudden we're traveling all over the country and it's costing a lot of money and £20 for a friendly. It's taking the piss, isn't it? <laughs> and and but, but then beyond that was... So the, the game was postponed, was cancelled because of COVID. And then it took three weeks for my money to be refunded after that game was cancelled. And, you know, there are issues with whether the issue was with Ticketmaster or whatever. But three weeks is not OK, you know, and this is another fan experience that is just not something's not right mm. and it's something that they do need to get right and and they can say, oh, if the football's good, people will come. Yeah, they will. But you're going to lose people and. It's well, something well, that doesn't fickle need to fans, happen. Fickle, fickle, you know, fickle fat. You know, this is a fact, right? If the club are doing really, really well, you get those sort of fickle fans that suddenly appear, don't they? From nowhere you've never seen before. You know, if Blackpool get in the Premier League, you'll have sixteen thousand there again. But the minute we're not in the Premier League, they'll all go away. Mm. You know, so you've got to kind of look after. You've got to try and get those people in, in into it, and. You know, this is one thing I've said about our, our channel and why we wish they would just engage with us a little bit more is that the, the simple fact that, you know, we do our best to engage with you and, you know, answer every email and answer every comment. If, if we can, we do we do our best and, and, and we have thousands of Blackpool fans watching our video week in, week out. And that's a lot of people and, and they don't seem to realise that we've got all these thousands of people that, that watch us and, you know, if this is... If I wear this top and I say this is a great top, then other people 
will buy this top because there's thousands watching us and they say, oh, I like that one. You know, it looks good on Lee. And our Bloomfield Road sign that we've covered up yeah, now, actually. Know, <laughs> the Bloomfield Road sign that's behind now. I'm, I'm sure people have gone and bought that because we bought them because they're like, oh, I quite like that. I like that in my bedroom. And all these sort of things we can do to help. If they gave us, you know, if they threw us a bone every now and again, it, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd do our best to push it if it was something good, wouldn't we? Well, I, 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 I don't necessarily agree with that personally because I, you know, I, I am of the opinion now um, that the club, we're independent of the club and, and for me that's, I'm viewing that as a good thing because no one controls my content. Um you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm being true to, to myself, uh, yeah. which it, it is important. And I don't always speak out you about things that I'm not happy about. And, and we're only doing this tonight because in answer to a thread on, on AVFTT that, that got a lot of, of, you know, engagement It's obviously a subject that people are passionate about. And that's why we're talking about it, because we can't be the only ones that feel like we do. Um, yeah. And, and the, you know, if people disagree with us, and then that's fine, too. You know, I, I say people have different values. Sure. Uh, just just can we rattle through the comments? Because we're, quite, we're well, half then, an hour behind on the comments now. Right, okay, go. Um, Harry says, this is what I hate about football fans. Supporting a club sometimes feels like a dictatorship where you're expected to go to every game and not speak out against the club or you're a fake fan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very true. It's just like in, in, in life in general, isn't it? Um, where in reality, these people have no idea how long you supported the club and how much money um, and how many games you've been to. Mm. Uh, Rodney Bint says, love your channel. Great job, Lee and Jay. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Thank you, Rodney. Uh, Ryan says, we also have a scheme called Majors, uh, which basically is a money-making scheme and you have to have it to get to away games and cup games. Our club is just money, money, money. Also, joke. Is that like these... This thing that Manchester City have got now, like the fan tokens. What, mm. what I don't really know. We what... haven't got we haven't got that far yet. But I mean, this is this is across football, which is why we wanted other fans to come in as well, because because they, you know, obviously fans. Uh, also, fans are not I mean, the interested. ticketing situation is, is another thing which mm. is nationwide. Um, I appreciate that that's nationwide. Um, that the fact that we had to complain about these Bournemouth tickets not being available until the Monday before the game on the Saturday. You know, people. People's anxiety is is heightened at the moment because of what we're all going through. And when people have booked hotels, have booked flights, trains, trains or coaches or whatever, um, and they haven't flights. got that match ticket, they'll, they'll, they'll become anxious about that. And we, is it going to arrive in the post in time? And it's, you know, it may have been that Bournemouth didn't send them until late, but nope. it was it was addition. I understand that the club received them on the Friday. They didn't go on sale on the Monday until the Monday. Um, because they didn't have, they said that they hadn't agreed the pricing structure. Well, why don't you agree the pricing structure? Get on the phone to them five weeks beforehand. Why you don't have to wait to have the tickets to agree that pricing structure? And it's just little things. It's all things that the fan experience that is just. And I know it's not just Blackpool. I know other clubs are having that issue as well. But it, it all just builds up and builds up. And you know, we've got we've got a lot going on in life. You know, and. And it's just, it's hard. It's hard for the clubs, but it's hard for us too. And just, well, going just, away is, it just takes a someone, lot of just a nice little word from a steward calling me sweetie. I'm just like, oh my God, you know, people can be so nice. And I just want people to be nice to me. Sorry, I'm getting emo. <laughs> yes. Um, and Mark Porter says, I agree. Jane Poole could learn a lot from Bournemouth and Bristol Reef fan engagement. Um, Ryan says, I get that the club need to make money, but there's making money and there's taking the proverbial. Um, Aid says, uh, hi, guys. thought I was listening to an audio broadcast initially. Um, I have to say I'm going to miss being able to watch every game online. Living 260 miles from Blackpool, I could almost be abroad. Yeah, mm. it's, it is something that, that really connected people with the club. I think it was uh, it was a, a good thing, wasn't it? Hmm. But well, we still, are well, you still to can um, watch the midweek games, can't you? Uh, not the midweek cup games, but the midweek league games. Um, on yeah, the Tangerine TV, TV like doesn't seem to be from. We don't watch it, so we don't watch Tangerine TV. But if, we have it. But for, yeah, we, we, we're, we're paying for it, but we don't need it because because we got the game that we went to every game. But I can already see people complaining to me that what they had with iFollow, even though it wasn't the most popular thing in the world. It wasn't that you only had one camera hang on all the rest of it, but at least you got to watch the games. So they've come up with this alternative of their own, which is, is in to probably to many fans is an inferior product. They can't watch the game live, you know, and um, it, you know, it. that's just a sign of the times. It's nothing to do with the product though, is it? 
No, but it's but but not but lots of other clubs are still on I follow because Sebi can because Sebi has gone on to the other you know to the other club and watched their feed of the match and paid for their I follow or whatever. So if he not had, at three o'clock on a Saturday. Yeah, though. if they're on I follow, yeah. Not he's sure watched about it. That. He's watched live. Okay. Um, David Skoll says, Jane, do you think clubs treat home supporters the same as away supporters? Um, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Um, mm. I don't know. They should be treated the same, really, shouldn't they? I don't know. That's, that's, I would that's imagine, you know, fans that come to... to, to It'd be interesting to, to hear. Of, get a great fan experience. Fans. Probably why they're singing at us. It's funny, we were talking earlier about... Um, wouldn't it be great if there was a like a, a trip advisor for football fans where you know you could speak to fans who have been to you know Millwall already this season and like you know what is it like you know are you allowed to to, to keep the the bottle on your drink when you're going the, the in top or on you do you get searched or whatever and just to, to, what's the food like what the pies like wouldn't yeah. it be wonderful yeah so, so that's that's sort of something we've, like a whole time. we've got germinating at the moment maybe um yes, maybe look at providing something like that um come out, yeah uh damien says good afternoon guys from michigan i'm still on a high from the results at the weekend yeah it was uh great oh rocco says jane i saw you at the ticket office i was in front of you all right <laughs> hey rocco hello. you should have said hello tony said hello um david skull says that's not fan engagement that's fan exploitation <laughs> yes if in the city if it's in the 70s it calls a union national walkout <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah what painting the ground uh, blackpool bible says i did i remember seeing you at wembley Lee, and you did spend a lot of time filming etc which as you say can't be easy especially when you want to enjoy the moment it believe me lee did not enjoy any moments inside wembley yeah. stadium until that final whistle no, you don't, but, but, but <laughs> just with with regards that it, it honestly doing all the recording and the videos that, that we do is really really hard work but i love it or else i wouldn't do it and for anybody else who fancies you know doing a vlog or doing that it's sort hard. of thing they want to do that i i can assure you it is a lot of hard it's an incredible amount of hard work that goes into it and i i, I wouldn't do it if i didn't like doing it you know no. i just like doing it so it's a kind of labor of love for me because i just love i love the you know i love the little kids you know we have little kids on our videos and stuff and they, you know they come up with the mums and dads and the mums and dads are pushing them you know get on get on you want to be on because they're all watching you know they probably shouldn't be because it's not made for kids the swear words and all the rest but you know you know they, you, you can't stop the people effing and blinding behind you and all that sort of stuff or next to you or or, or yeah or me <laughs> at an occasion but I, I tend to cut it out if i have sworn but but I uh, me. <laughs> uh, oh and yeah, yeah and jane as well so like not all, but off. we always you know if any little kid comes up i've always got to ask the parents is it is it okay you know that that, that they come on and uh it's it's fantastic all that sort of stuff um i love and uh, you know i love the excitement in the little kids eyes when they're on and they're on tv you know to little kids and young kids the youtube is tv you know it's it they watch it as tv and you know it, for them it's like being on tv and they're so excited and all, all that i honestly it is my joy you know some mother messaged me a couple of seasons ago that a, a, a son was taking penalties and it was at the north end and i had to get permission from the stewards to go around and record him getting the penalties and i did it because it's he wonderful meant it, yeah. he meant a lot to her she was over the moon it was you know no skin off my nose to go and do something like that and that's what we're that's what we're about and you know, but back to the comments. Um, Alan Duckworth says Neil Critchley knows the game as regards connecting with the supporters. He sets the benchmark. Others will hopefully follow. Yeah, that's very true because you compare Simon Grayson to um, oh my God, to Neil Critchley. Um, Simon would never acknowledge the fans if he did it was to well you know lower your expectations you know it's it's tough up here you know he it's, you're, you're, you're to expecting fans, too much i don't listen yeah. to any fans comments. But where, i don't pay any attention that's whereas, what he said. whereas critch will always will always acknowledge the fans in his interviews oh yeah. the, you know the fans are fantastic today and 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 that's you know so that's wonderful no, so yeah it. you're right alan neil critchley is is good um and hopefully, yeah, he's setting the benchmark. Uh, Scorn says, I booked seven weekends off to watch the pool at home. Fantastic. Uh, Alan says, that's why it's so important for a member of the board to make a real-life customer journey for a week, home and away. Gosh, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that would be because, yeah, because they're not, you know, the, the board are like, you know, three men in the 40s and 50s in suits, aren't they? Do they, you know, do they understand really what, what the fan experience is? That's, yeah, that's, that'd be really interesting, uh, experiment that, wouldn't it? Like the undercover, 
uh, the undercover fan. Um, uh, Reese says, why would there be a fight at a friendly? And absolutely no idea. It does happen, but, you know, it wasn't going to happen. Lee says, I know some of the stewards at Morecambe, top blokes, and they're also doormen at my local pub. Really nice guys. Oh, no, well, they, they weren't. Not the ones in our end. They no, they bloody well. They, they were terrifying. They were horrible. They were terrifying. They all just had, like, angry faces and on. They were walking was... all the time. They were just looking <laughs> for any sort of trouble. Yeah, they? it was not, they, not they good. They just made it a very... Uh, you know, for a friendly where everything's, you know, who cares about a friendly? You know, yeah. it, it's just the club. Are the clubs interested in the friendly? Really, it's just a, it, it's just a, it's just a nothing. Isn't but then, it? in comparison, we went well, to, um, we went to, to we went to more confront after we'd been to that game, and um, there was a singer on, and and there was like a fence, and we were stood outside the fence just watching this singer, and this uh, there was a steward there, and he like, come over to me, and he says. So excuse me, Lord. And I'm thinking, bloody hell, what have I done now? Because I was on edge from the stewards <laughs> at the ground. And he said, you can step inside if you like. It's free. And I'm yeah. like, oh, <laughs> a nice steward. Why aren't you working at the ground? Uh, yeah, Maybe yeah. he had the day off for more yeah, pride. Who knows? Maybe, Maybe. it wasn't one of the stewards. Uh, John Haley says. I think that's some temporary guys. In John Haley says, Wembley in 2012 was the worst ever. West Ham fans in the Blackpool and oh, frightening no, as well. Bad. That was yeah, horrific. Course, Let's was not bad. dwell on that one. But it's, but it's the thing that you see. That bad experience, many people will never ever forget. They will never no. ever forget that day because and it's it a bad experience. People off go into matches and that, that well, is kind families. of what we're talking about about the fan experience. Yeah. We all look, listen, football's great. And if you win, you know, and you're winning and you're top of the league, fan engagement is like secondary to everything because it's just so wonderful. But when you have a bad experience like that, and you know, we were a fantastic team that year, we got to Wembley, we, you know, we thrashed Birmingham, didn't we? We were flying. Mm. We get to Wembley and, and for many fans, that was the worst Terrific. Wembley yeah. we ever went to. And I have nothing good to say about West Ham fans or the stewards or anything. I mean, I, I wasn't involved in any of that, but I've read about it and just the hostility outside the ground, wasn't it? It wasn't nice. It wasn't mm. a pleasant place to be. It wasn't our and Wembley, Wembley, was Wembley was it? wasn't like Wembley, was no. it? In, in any way, we've been to Wembley so many times and it'd been joyous and colourful and wonderful and we were all in fancy dress and the other fans were were all nice West Ham fans were just absolutely terrifying mm. from the minute you got anywhere near Wembley and you just felt it was all wrong the whole game felt wrong for me back to the comments NW67 says the fan zone at Accrington was amazing too amazing. yes it was it I mean uh, I filmed that and it was wonderful it was just like a little tent uh, marquee I suppose you call them attached to the ground and they got an acoustic guitarist called Zach Acoustic very Zach good acoustic. just doing you know Oasis oh, and you've never forgot his name have you no I haven't no and uh, he was doing you know Sweet Caroline and everything there was there was Blackpool fans and Daki fans in there there was, a, there was a little bar and we are all singing in a way and it was just a joyous and again that sets you in a good mood going into the ground and it yeah. was a joyous thing and there was no trouble um and it was it was lovely but and yeah i believe there's a, there's a few other clubs that have those i believe lincoln has one i believe yeah. Tranmere has Tranmere one happened, as well yeah, we didn't go um, just quickly on on that and um we went to both you know both those games we went to um aki away and did the fan zone and we also went to um doncaster and both of those clubs both of the clubs, when we put the blogs up on the channel and said how wonderful they were, both of the clubs emailed us. I, I, I got an email from Doncaster Rovers to say, we've watched your video. Absolutely fantastic. When you come to Doncaster next season, because we, we should have been doing, obviously, but COVID stopped. Um, we are inviting you to come early. We're going to give you a tour of the ground and we're going to show you everything. And I was like, like, Wow, that's amazing! Yeah. And the Accrington, yeah, one, I, I had a message they, from one of the directors. They read at, at, Jane's at, blog, at, and, yeah, and she had a message insane. from the director inviting yeah. her to come down, and they were going to put out the red carpet for her. And this yeah. is what we're talking about: an engagement, a different guys. sort. Of, you know, for us, <laughs> I, I, know, I, know that's not, I, I know that's not for like a regular fan, but for what we do and the work we put in, mm. when we go somewhere like that, honestly, it just makes you love Doncaster Rover straight off because they just, you know, they were honestly they emailed they us. Found us and Claire, the girl that you know that came on at Doncaster, followed us. She emails all the time. She even comes in the stream sometimes because we loved her. <laughs> you know, we just loved the way she was with us. She was adorable. And one of the things that, that that we you know we, we were sort of doing more. When I touched. I was on a Sunderland podcast earlier, and, and I mentioned this. One of the things that that we've in learn more from our time in lockdown and doing these streams is we engage more with 
people from other clubs, fans from other clubs, and we've got more in common than we have differences. Um, and, you know, if one person realises that from watching what we do, it's not, you know, we hate these, you're the opposition and, and we hate you and yeah. we go and we just go and stay in our little group and then we leave. Actually engaging with these people from these other clubs who are just like us, yeah. they are, they, we've got more in common than we've got differences and there are, there are people like you and me all around all these clubs and yeah, just like and us. it's a wonderful just, thing that, that like we're us. learning to embrace and now yeah that, that's one of the beautiful things of, of doing this channel i mean i mean at bournemouth weren't they the people in bournemouth everybody became came across on on the friday and the saturday were just Please. wonderful you know they were so friendly yeah. they were so nice and when we got to the ground you know some people you know could see that we were blackpool and they were directing us around and a guy walks along with us with his wife and i'll say you know he wouldn't come on and he was saying his wife knows all these media people but she wouldn't come on but they were so friendly yeah. and uh you know so you missed a trick with you know you should have got her on because she knows people at like sky sports and all this i was like oh god but they were just lovely that everything about Bournemouth and you didn't feel any hatred towards Bournemouth mm. fans. We didn't anyway, you know, we just didn't feel any hatred whatsoever to Bournemouth fans. Cause we just, no. we just loved it. No, well, and, well, well, and, should we? You know, that's, that's it. I really need to rattle Rather through than... these. We're still half an hour behind on these comments. Uh, Blackpool Bible says my dad's a city fan and wow, the pre-match is amazing. Loads of fan zones, make a huge deal of the players coming in. There's a stage with local bands, ex players, giveaways, etc. It's actually amazing. Yeah. Sunderland yeah, have course. got something similar actually. Absolutely wonderful. Um, wonderful. I know they can't do that yet because they haven't got it, but they could get rid of that bloody nursery and they could put something in like Brian says our smart card reader on Thursday night at the disabled end wasn't working. The solution for the stewards, if you if you know them, let them in. If you don't, don't. That's shocking. That's yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, uh, bad. Apple Bible agrees. Speakers in Bloomfield Road are so bad. It's terrible. Uh, David Scholes um, says there was possibly three different roles in the stewarding. Uh, job number one, meet and greet. Yeah. And number two, safety. Yes. And number three, security. Yes. These are three separate entities and should involve specific training. That's a very interesting point, yeah. David. We yeah. all want to be safe. We all don't want a lot of away yeah. fans running into our end and beating us all up. We get yeah. all that. You know, we, we don't want fans running on the pitch and all that sort of stuff and ruining the game. And, you know, that's their job job but but their job is also to like you say to meet and greet you were saying about the guy at the hotel in in, in the corner there used to be a guy you know open the door for you welcome you in oh you know do the lift for you and all that sort of stuff when you when you used to roll these mm. what, what a wonderful little old yeah. guy he was that you know I'm, I'm really fond of that you know that guy he's amazing and more of that rather than just like what's in your bag what's in this what mm. you're doing what you're up to you know yeah where have you traveled from today yeah you, know, you go well that's a big bag you know where, 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 where have you come from have you come just, on the train or i just think they're going to get on today charm school isn't it yeah. Har Trail charm harry school. mark says uh fun fact our stadium announcer at dean court was the same guy who did the stadium announcements at wembley during the euros was that wow. it wasn't paul burrell was it um John Haley says, lol, remember when one of the Nolans used to kick off the season? Yes, Linda Nolan. Uh, Blackpool Bible says, another topic I agree with. My season tickets in the north. I don't go for a pint or food in the north stand because it's too busy. Dread the idea of even going to the toilet. Yeah, it is really bad, it's isn't bad. it? So just imagine all that. Just imagine anybody who's watching this that's in the north stand. Imagine them getting rid of that nursery. and Imagine that being a massive <laughs> visualize. <big> bar. <laughs> just, just to visualise it. And it all opens out. And you, you're not in that little concourse. And you can all go out and you can watch a band or watch some entertainment at half time. And it's all, like, beautiful. And you've got big, massive, you know, the, how big was that screen? in the bar at bristol city like i don't know a hundred foot big massive screen and just eat you know a nice restaurant in there and just you know catering in there different things just just imagine that end without that stupid nursery in it. it would be amazing and honestly i i, I went down because i was, I was going to move move the gym you know we were looking at moving the gym in, in into the north north end of the ground and those those units at the back are absolutely unbelievably massive they're huge and it's such a waste you know to, to not have it as something that you know that could be used and they could use it for weddings they could use it for you know take that you know fake take that night see you know, they could have bands in there there's and as i keep saying if you're a band or a dj if you could just roll your stuff in off you know on a level thing bands would come it's, it's having to lift all your stuff up bloody escalators it's like it's, it, you know upper lifts it, it's it's hard work back to the comments i've gained three minutes now uh aid whitaker says some cracking ideas coming from yourself and jane lee we do need to get with the times lost opportunities at the moment that's a kind of also a blackpool specific thing isn't it um in in the you know we we've been went to bournemouth and all the amazing stuff that they got down there like 
Blackpool's got none of this. You but know? we're the entertainment capital of the bloody UK. We aren't should we? be. We're the yeah. entertainers. You know, Jane actually wants us to be called the entertainers. I think, not... I think our, when, when Simon Sadler came oh, in, see, so he, said, he said, he well, said, we're going to play entertaining football. You know, that's sort of part of our MO. So we're the entertainers. And like, why is our nickname not the entertainers? That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Why don't we change it, rebrand? Uh, Dom Clark says, uh, Lincoln fan zone is getting better. Tell us about it, Dom, because I missed out on that. Yeah. Uh, Christian says, give the cup time. They've had to clean up the mess inherited by the oil it takes time agree that the community trust has a part to play no we do appreciate I and mean, we appreciate all the work that they are doing i'm just concerned that the fan engagement area is something that they don't realize is a thing um and and they need to or else they're going to start losing fans and i don't want that to happen i don't want to i don't want to give up and go and watch guys get well i do actually but i don't want to want that you know i want to um I want to I want to feel that my club loves me and values me as a fan. Not that I think I'm anything special because I'm a blogger or whatever. Because I'm a, a I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person. I'm a human being, and, and I love that club. Yeah. Just want to be loved back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Wee Whites 2011's TV says Lee. That's a brilliant idea about the North Stand and putting a bar in instead of the nursery. Um, a bunch of percent. It's like a no brainer. But what about the babies? Who cares? Somewhere else. <laughs> Good Throw them in the sea. It's about as, it's got as much to do with football as well. I mean, what has it got to do with football? Are they the future? Are they hoping to get them as future fans? And the nurse, Brian, but no, it should be for the fans. For Brian God's sake. says, it's a opportunity. "I know you don't like him, Lee, but Smith was at Gillingham a couple of seasons at uh, Gillingham a couple of seasons ago and showed the food, and they had like Italian and Chinese, etc. Mm. Crystal Palace is actually very good as well. They have like really uh, posh pies. They have uh, like gourmet pies. They have like lamb and mint with um, you know, with um." Uh, herbs sprinkled on the top and they're, they're really good they can't stand to me expensive. because he talks too fast <laughs> uh, uh, Eugene says uh, in Goodison they have a bar in the ground and a betting shop in the ground as well yeah there are I think there are little betting I don't, I don't approve of gambling either so don't get me started on that uh, Blackpool Bible says hospitality at Bloomfield Road is really bad too compared to some clubs up in Scotland well, clubs like Arbroath Dundee hospitality is phenomenal Should well they're we not even giving the them they're clubs. not even okay. giving them match programs anymore in the hospitality the 53 club that you know we know somebody who goes in there has gone there for a long time and what they're offering in the 50 they're charging how much are they charging 65 pounds to go in the 53 club sure. it's quite a lot of money they don't get a program anymore <laughs> it's like, like so you don't get a program you, you you get like a team sheet and you don't get the food anymore that you used to get you just get like i don't know like a, a pork pie or something don't you mm. and they're just not happy about it. They're just I, not happy. I appreciate that they've got to look at the margins. I do get that. Oh, but, God. but if you if people aren't feeling valued because of what you're doing, just think about is it the right thing to do? Uh, MKC side did the hospitality season before last for a birthday. Agree, it was not the best for the money. Harry Mog, I've played at Dorchester, nice little ground. Plus, I've watched non-league games there. My local non-league club I go to sometimes is Wimborne. Jane is right. Non-league clubs make you feel wanted. I do. Um, you feel wanted as uh, a fan, not as a not as a M blogger or YouTuber. MK Seasider says something. I did. I did think this. I wonder whether this was a possibility. He says they could use the car park behind the north now and have a tent like Accrington. Yeah, they um, could. The club, the club own that land. They do. Yeah, it's their car park. So that's and, that's and, an and option. But, but, but they give all that car park into the nursery. <laughs> <laughs> Down that nursery. Um, Neil Taylor says, please look after Tom BFC Taylor for me next week. And couldn't explain two weekends away from the missus. Yeah, we met you, didn't we, at uh, Outside the Pier at Bournemouth. Uh, John Haley says, it's never going to happen. Blackpool is full of non-locals. You will never get the massive crowds again. Oh, we will. Um, that's, that's Matthew, not true. But, 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 yeah, the, that's not true. Matthew Warrender says, are you coming to bury AFC away on 25th of the 9th, 21 with AFC Blackpool? I don't haven't looked that far ahead in the calendar, but we're probably somewhere. Um, we haven't forgotten about AFC Blackpool. We do love them as well. We do um, love AFC Blackpool. Even though we're still waiting on our quote for our rewiring from the manager. We are, uh, Eugene we are. says, gone, you can do a poll on this channel to make Blackpool FC much better. We're not coming until you come, come sort this bloody electric out. We've waited about three months <laughs> if you're um, watching. Uh, um, uh, AFC Blackpool's at Garstang on Bank Holiday Monday. Are you trying to lure us away from the uh, from the the, the 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 open training session at Blackpool? There, do no, they clash? Into that. I'll go to that. I'm do they clash? About that, unbelievable. They've come out with that. Obviously, 
timed with us. Is so. that is that at home or is, is it at Garstown? Is that to shut us up? Do you think this, <laughs> this training session? Um, you know, we're having a round. I, I would actually consider that. Actually, on Blackpool, I'm going to AFC Blackpool. Uh, Mark Port says, "Cringe apart." I can't help thinking Blackpool City aren't making the most of their passionate fans when it comes to fan engagement. No, and and, and I wonder. Um, I did hear someone say this. Um, you know, I, I, it's not for me to put other people's words or, or, or name them, but someone said that perhaps you know the club are keeping fans at arm's length because of what's happened. Previously, with you know, obviously the fans had a big hand in in ousting the former owners. Yeah, so are they? Years of pain. But do they feel <laughs> threatened? And are they deliberately keeping the fans at arm's length because of that? Is is there an element of that? I mean, we're I, not going to turn on Simon Sadler like we no, turned on we're the not. Oysters. He's going to have to do no. thirty years of hurt to, to get us <laughs> yeah. to that point. Where yeah, we, you're going to have to we, sue we fans are, in the We are corn. severe putter uppers, aren't we? <laughs> Honestly, but... <laughs> we've put up with some shit, Simon, for thirty years. So trust me, we're all uh, everybody's like happy about uh, Simon MK's... Sadler. Happy we're in the MKC Sider says the fact they can't even manage to have home shirts in stock at the start of the season is laughable but yeah is that a sign of the times as well though great opportunity to sell them whilst people were wanting them my wife was buying me one but now the moment has gone mm. uh, but, but there's, there's a shortage of all sorts of things at the moment there is, isn't that there can, so that can be I don't think COVID. that's necessarily their fault but I mean it's just if they learn from, from these things which it's a learning curve you know we've got new people in charge they are going to get things wrong of course it's going to happen you've got a new young owner in he's new to football he is going to get things wrong it's it's just you you've got to accept that but you know we just want to point out that there is something that that is is not as good as it could be uh, a, de a development area should we say um ryan says i make the effort from scotland to go once or twice a season regardless of what league we'll be in for the love of my club well done, Ryan. Fightful Bible says, we have got a core 8,000 fans that need to be looked after, and I'm in a similar boat with yourself. I've got 12.8K followers on Instagram and yeah. never been reached out to by the club for no. anything. I don't want anything, but even just something I can do to help too, but nothing at all. Yeah, I mean, I used to... And, the, and, and honestly, if you don't subscribe to, if you don't subscribe to Blackpool, Blackpool Bible, Bible, yeah, do, do then honestly, yeah. it's the best. I mean, Seb all the time quotes Blackpool Bible to me, and if I've if he, if, if Blackpool Bible actually retweet anything, mind Seb, Seb, Seb freaks out that he doesn't <laughs> like. They're, they're, they're the gods to to, to to the young kids. So yeah, the, yeah, you know, it's just engage. I mean, I I always used to, um, you know, I used to give them fanzines to sell in the club shop, and never asked for you know, never asked for any money from those. They kept all the profits. Um, um, and I used to do a, I have a couple of pages in the match program that I used to write when Matt Williams was there. And, you know, occasionally if we went to like a, you know, cause I knew I went to all the games. If we were at a, you know, an LDV match on a Tuesday night away at Macclesfield or something, and there was no one there. He's like, look, you know, we've got all these players comps, you know, have them. And they're just like, it's just a little thing. There's nothing to them because they're not being used anyway. And, mm. and I'm like, that was just a nice gesture. It wasn't something I ever asked for. I'm not one of these people who wants freebies, but it's just, a, it's a token and it's some, a little something that makes you feel valued, isn't it? Do you want to tell your fanzine story? Um, <laughs> Do you want me to bring it up? Do you want me to tell a little bit about what happened? Um, it's this is this is just one little no no no, no you don't. I mean I don't want to make a big thing of it but basically with the fanzine I always used to stand at certain points around the ground to sell it and now if I stand or any of my sellers stand on club property selling the fanzine they're asked to move yeah um, so I stand where I stand, which is obviously not called property or else they would move me along. And it's just like little things like that. Well, I'm not doing any harm. You know, it's, it's a nice thing that I'm doing and it, why, just why, why? Do it for the love. And they're like, well, if you want to sell on club property, you've got to send us a, a request in writing and, and the board will consider it and we'll come back to you. I'm just like, fuck off. I'll just stand over there. You know, there's just, there just wasn't any need for that. I didn't think, but the other story, what other story. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they wanted a free one. Oh you know, gosh, yes. yes. Oh yes. Uh, so go on, you tell it. I was I was selling fanzines standing in my yeah. spot outside. Is, you don't remember this is the first game of the season, and this is the game that I went down to video the the BSD meeting where we saw Linton Brown and everything. You know, he he, he came and talked. If you remember that video, now now Jane is. I wasn't is, there. She wasn't there. So I was she's selling, selling fanzines. The fanzines. And so I'm two guys. Let me, let me carry on. on, carry on. Um, she doesn't can, know. Can I just put this in context? Yes. So the night before, we've been to the cinema and we've been to see the Joker. Um, uh, which was a wonderful movie and and to put it in context what what the joke is about if you haven't seen it is about a you know an anti-establishment guy but he's like the hero he's like these men in suits are really bad and he's just like killing them all but you're kind of on his side 
Yeah. Um, so just to set the scene there, so like <laughs> men in suits, bad. So I'm standing selling my fanzines. I'm just standing there. Fanzine Two guys. random guys. And three, suits. three men in suits uh, come up to me and try and take a fanzine out of my hand. Um, yeah. And not saying who they are. Not, no, I didn't. I didn't know who they were, and I'm, 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 I'm holding them. Hello, I'm am. like, it's two pound if you want one of those. He's like, and I'm like, oh, what? To wrestle it off you? Yeah, he was literally trying to wrestle it off me, and I'm like, I said it's two pound. They're like, well, well, we haven't got any cash on us. I'm like, well, you can't have one then. <laughs> and then anyway, they went off, and then I, I thought about it, and I thought. That was, who they are. and then that, and that was like how I knew directors and I didn't know who they were they knew who I was they knew my name but I didn't know who they were and they just come over and try and wrestle a fanzine off me <laughs> like, <laughs> just on what, the ground what, what, what the fuck because I don't give free fanzines do you anyway even Lee doesn't get a free fanzine no I don't, no, I don't want to have to um, pay <laughs> and then um, so, so that was that and we'd sort of I've seen him in hospitality a couple of weeks later and, and Lee had said, oh, look, you know, she didn't know who you were. And oh, I made a little bit. And then the next time I saw him, I was out selling fanzines. There was something going on outside the ground um, be before a, a match or something. And I saw him again, the guy who tried to press his fanzine. Brown, Linton, I think it was. Yeah, I said, oh, I've, you know, you can have one. Do you want a fanzine? And he's like, it's like, no, 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 thanks. Yeah, like, just, rude, just like, he? No, he, like... was, he wasn't rude. But no. I just thought it would have been a nice thing for him to accept that. So, yeah, so just did. that, that, that's, Again, that's, that's fan just, engagement. It's isn't just it? another little example. I know you won't and there's so many little examples. I know you like won't experience that. that as we do because and you're not doing that, but, but, but you can people, understand how that gets. Well, the thing you. is, other people come to us and they tell us about other similar experiences that they're having when they try and have dealings with the club. That they're having it's just little things. It's just like you make to feel like you're nothing. <laughs> and actually, we're your customers and we're giving you so much money. Just Love us. We yeah. love you. Love us back. Yes, okay. Um, back to the comments. <laughs> um, uh, John Haley says, fan trouble at Oldham. Tell me more. Tell me more. Don't leave us hanging. Half a story, Haley. Uh, Ryan says, no, my jersey is basically a loyalty scheme. £50 a season. All you get is a membership and discounts on certain things. It's a tiered system based on points, and you can only get points by attending games. Um, okay, yeah. So you, you basically, they're... they're rewarding the fans that go to more games which is i, I get that um dom says ticket schemes do get distorted unfortunately speak to rangers fans my eyes are going uh, harry says to be honest bournemouth are appalling at sending tickets out to fans a lot of the home fans have the same problem some even have to wait outside the ticket office on the day of the game think it's our club yeah that's to be honest that's what our club said they did blame you <laughs> um but yeah and then they were also saying that yeah you, know, you didn't have all your season tickets out as well which and there were massive queues weren't there at the home end we were mm quite shocked by that um dom clark says need meaningful and realistic supporters on board and matthew says are you to jepson way on back holiday money for se but v gas down oh god he's determined to get us down there isn't he well we'll, we'll, we'll look into that i think i go to the training bit, but uh, but we're also very it. tired because we just got back from bournemouth <laughs> uh but bible says tangerine tv was awful on saturday i wasn't able to get on and watch the bournemouth first half i use a vpn to watch it if the product is really poor i got my 10 pound refunded on saturday uh Tim awesome. the Tangerine says I follow was a godsend to exiles. Uh Don Clock says solos are a good idea, but need to be able to affect decisions higher up. What does that mean? Solos are a good idea. Um Mark Porter says the pies at Bournemouth are superb. Great stuff. What did you have? Um a Mac says last season with I follow was the first time in my life I actually watched every game of the season. Oh, well, what a great season to, to watch as well, a promotion season. David Skull says not the clubs, it's TV companies who dictate when matches are. I can't refuse to get to that going. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, Harry, Harry Mock says what's the nearest uh, MLS club to Michigan? I've been following MLS a lot oh, recently. Really before you get there. Um, okay, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to um, get forward now. Uh, we all aspire to play in high leagues, says Dom. However, fan, fan experience deteriorates as you get your wishes just saying that is very very true dom um hmm. even at non-league you go up the steps uh definitely there's there's, there's yes less of it. i totally get that but that said it doesn't necessarily have to be the case because it's it not to be that way and it isn't at other clubs it isn't it, it's clubs. not at other clubs you know bournemouth they've been in the premier league and they were lovely so it doesn't necessarily have to follow but yeah i do i do get that simsy says enjoying the show tonight guys thumbs up how it is ryan <laughs> Uh, I'm not. I'm not talking about MLS. Not interested in that. Um, have you heard the new transfer news? It's Hollow. We're interested in a five million pound player. I don't know where we would get that money from. Who's Hollow? Is he Blackpool? No. I don't know. 
Uh, Michael Hayek says, Jane, you need to answer the questions on Facebook as well. What questions? I forgot to say. What questions on Facebook as well? Uh, Don Clark says, Wembley is so crap. Oh, gosh. But I like, I, like, I, like, I, like, I like the machines. Oh, you might not that... see them on here. On oh, do I not? Oh, you should right. do. I, I'm getting them on here. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on YouTube, so I'm no, not seeing them. I'm getting Facebook comments. That's weird. We should be getting Facebook comments. Uh, We're not getting Facebook comments. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't know why Facebook isn't. Terminally cool. Tangerine says, Remember going to Brighton and really made to feel welcome as an away supporter. Um, Blackpool videos in the away end, for example, making supporters feel welcome and valued. Customers is 21st century. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's nice. Blackpool videos in the away end. Oh, yeah. It's lovely. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, by the way, just switch over to I us think, on YouTube because um, we're not getting Facebook comments. Was through. it was it Brighton that I think always used to have? They had like their beer, but they would have like a local beer from from the club that they were playing as well. Am I, or am I making that up? Um, NW67 says, hopefully Blackpool starts to give you the respect you deserve. I could listen to you both all day long and love all your videos. Please keep it up. Hashtag up the mighty pool. Thank you very much. Um, John Haley says, when my son was quite young, I used to sit him on the West Paddock wall. Memories. Oh, yes. I love the old paddocks. I miss that. Um, Ryan Dunbar says, that guy was incredible when we were down at Fleetwood. The game was so genuinely lovely. He even walked us to the car and waved us off. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's that. that. That's the sort of stuff we talk. Nick Muller's in the house. Uh, I'm hey. off to Brentford and Forest Group versus Forest Green Rovers tomorrow. New ground, only ten pounds. Sitting with Forest Green, I hate Brentford. I'm sitting with Forest Green, I hate Brentford. Go oh well, switch. that's that's good. Yeah, they've got a new ground, Brentford, of course, haven't they? Um, mm. So I haven't been to Brentford or Forest Green. Um, no. But yeah, ten pound is good, good price. Um, going back to that twenty pound, by the way, for um, for that Rangers friendly, at Carlisle for twenty pound, you get a three course meal that much twitter's not working either i, I don't no. I, I don't know why we are connected to both uh, i've got ticks here saying that we're connected to yeah. facebook and uh, twitter but you know you get tech issues with us it's, it's not us you it, get what it, you it, pay it, for it, it'll be stream yard <laughs> and we pay for it so i will be sending in a complaint <laughs> rory hamilton says get the feb back that was a so you're saying i'm shit <laughs> tom clark <laughs> the says, fep will be back by the way uh, in a format that's probably I similar. think you need to get the FVP talking about this stuff yeah, because it course. affects everybody and yeah, it's obviously course, something that people you know have opinions on maybe about on. next Monday but it's Bank Holiday Monday but a few have said they want to come back we, we, we're already double booked for Bank Holiday Monday <laughs> I'm also doing a, a, another show on a Sunday night and I'm, I'm meeting now Championship vloggers and we can maybe get some championship ones in with us on the fbp and you know i've learned that we can have slots for people so obviously if, you know if people can't arrive for a certain time they have slots so you can book your slot and come in a bit later tom so clark we'll says local now. food providers pouring pints pouring points away fans welcome uh, oh, local food providers pouring. But oh, no, I don't understand the sentence. Sorry, Jordan. Are you saying Doncaster value you and BFC don't? I'm really baffled. I've just come on. Yes, uh, yeah. Basically, that that's um, that's how I, I that's how Doncaster make me feel, and that's how Blackpool make me feel. Yes, that is. Um, yeah. You know, watch the replay. It's not the only thing we're talking about. But we were just giving an, an example yeah. of, of how um, something that we did and put a lot of effort into and we praised Doncaster equally as much as we we, we, we praised Blackpool whenever we yeah, can. Yeah, basically we got just, an just email straight away saying, just, God, just, wow. just to, to recap our, our experience you know? of Doncaster, if, if you didn't see our, our vlog from when we went, it was my birthday actually two years ago. It's the last away win that we've seen. Can you believe that? Um, nearly two years now since we've seen us win away in person. Um, but, you know, the, the stewards were so lovely and welcoming. Even before we got to the ground, they, they addressed us as sir and madam. Oh, you know, it's that way you need to go. You have a little laugh and a joke with them on the turnstile. Um, you go in the ground. My name's you know, Alan. Yeah, my name's Alan. Let me take you around here and Claire will show you this. <laughs> Claire little, will come. Come on, this Claire. This penalty shootout competition. And, and shoot we were made to feel so welcome there. It was amazing. It was amazing. That, that I, I, you know, I said, I, I said earlier, I'll, I'll just repeat again, that, that I, I felt like they were going to escort me to, to me me to my seat and, and bring me a pie i yeah. felt that welcome yeah. at doncaster and yeah. and and the support the, carpet, the supporter example. experience at blackpool is the not only that. reason you get there early is to avoid the queues yeah you're you not know, looked after when you're, you're not, in there really are no you're you not know, made to feel valued massive, it's just the, the, you can't get food the queues are really big you just go up straight up to your seat get to the loo half time whatever and go home there's nothing that Encourages the you PA to be there early. Work. I know it, it needs to be fixed. I don't know why it's. I, I would just get rid of it all and put in a proper PA system like the ad. It's just, it's Bournemouth, just the, which is amazing. the fan, ex the, the fan, the fan experience. Like we're stripping the football out of the equation. Obviously, the football is important, but we're not. 
discussing that tonight. We're discussing the, the fan experience yeah. when you but go. That to is part sound. Sound. Right? Yeah. It's yes. very, very important. And if you watch my video and go to the end where they put up the six minutes of extra time and you listen to that PA system on my video, it is phenomenal. And it did sound that crystal clear, beautiful, didn't burst your eardrums. It was just the absolute right. You could hear everything as clear as a bell. It was wonderful. And, you know, I know a lot of people knock Tony Parr and, you know, say he shouts in the microphone, but it's because of this equipment he's using. If I've, anybody uses that equipment they'll sound bad because it's just bad and it needs it's part of you know something that i know they've done lots of things around the ground and painted and all that so we appreciate all of that of course we do but i always think that you know painting the ground is it's a bit like painting right if you buy a house, you look after it. They've bought a football club. They look after it. You'd expect them to look after it. It's what I could never understand with the oysters. I, I think, wh why have you built something that you're just letting like, rust to the ground? Well, they're, so they're building up the value of the club is I, what they do. I don't feel that as fan engagement. I don't feel that's for us. It's for, for them because it's theirs. They look after it. They want, Simon Sadler doesn't like the rust. I, I don't like the rust, but he's not doing that for me. He's doing that because the bloody place is falling down and he has to kind of do it. So that... It doesn't like help me. The advertising boards around the ground are wonderful. I mean, honestly, I, I feel so. Uh, They're cool, aren't they? I feel it, it's cool. I feel like we've gone up a level. I feel like we're more professional. But is it for me? Is that are they doing that for me or are they doing that to bring revenue in? And you could argue, and I said this to Jane, you could argue, yes, they're doing it to bring more revenue in because more revenue means they can buy more players, better players, give us better football, and give us what we want. I get. I get that. I get that. But you've also got to do the things that the fans need. And the fans need a bloody PA system that sounds good. All you need is love. It's so important. People have often said, you know, what should we come out? What song should we come out to, to make the, you know, the place go wild? It doesn't matter what song. It doesn't matter. They could play the best, greatest motivational song in the world. You can't bloody hear it because it's crackling on, off, on, and off. And that was great at Rochdale, the music at Rochdale, really. I was Get singing in the toilets, you know, Get it's another thing going. to really, yeah. Sound, you know, I make videos and, and sound is, 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 is as important yeah. as, as the video. I mean, we lost the video in this stream. We lost it completely. The video um, thing that I use, I've had to put the cam link in instead. It just it just went on as the mage will. I couldn't find the bloody cam. I found it in the end. Um, but that went and you could still enjoy the show because you still had the audio. Mm. You still have the audio. Audio is, the sound is it's well, so I'm the same with fanatic. Coronation Street when I'm watching it yeah. on the train. If, I, if, if it buffers sometimes, I can still it, hear it. I can still know what's happening. Yeah, you can still know what's going on. So it, 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 that... That needs sorting out more than the than the electronic advertising around the pitch. I know it's good, but that is a, it's so important. And I don't understand it's important why. Important to the to the fan experience it's and us feeling experience. valued. Um, Nick Muller, uh, important news here. Colchester have really good pie and mash. All fans can eat in the same bar cafe. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a nice thing actually. I remember I remember going to Blackburn Rovers. Um, against Pay FC, say SKA saw fire in the UEFA Cup uh, because it was it was like a fiver in or something. And I lived in Walsall. I'm just like, oh, should we go? Yeah, just because it's a UEFA Cup game and um, it's a fiver in or a tenner in or something. I just wanted to go to UEFA Cup game. I'd never been to Ewell Park. And it was when Jack Walker was there um, and they got this um, – supporters bar and they've got like rover vision tv on in the little booth so you can watch like the little highlights in the interviews and they've got like a canteen style thing where you get hot meal sit down you drink on the table they've got like little fixture cards um with bus timetables because they put on shuttle buses for the fans to get them to the ground and i'm just thinking oh my god this is amazing and I went into the ground and there was a sign on the door of the toilet saying we're really sorry. There's no hot water today. And I'm like, football grounds have hot water. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And it was just like, but Jack Walker was a fan, wasn't he? And, and yeah. he provided all this stuff and, and he knew what he was doing. And it was, you know, he, oh God, he was a wonderful, wonderful man, wasn't he? What yeah. he did for Blackburn. But it's just little things like that, you know, that, that all add up to, to make this joyful fan experience. Comments are coming in and, and we do know we're aware. Oh. We're just getting through them as fast as we can because there's lots of comments. So, I know. I'm, I'm up to 20 it. minutes behind now. 
now. We'll just um, on the comments. Ryan Dunbar says, away. couldn't they open the corner flag restaurant for hospitality? I don't know what they do up there during the game. Um, Ian Barron's here from Darlington. Good evening. And I uh, hope you're well and have a good day. Like the new setup. Wowzers. Thank you. Uh, it's not a green screen. No, this is our no, no, studio. It's really I do all my work there. That's my, yeah, that's my desk is... there. I did the YouTuber hack and built a This is what we live. I, Ikea things and a, a table and a, and a kitchen top and I made it just how I wanted it. And so I can now come over here to talk to you or go back there and work on my videos, it, you know. Uh, Lee John says, try to book hospitality, um, nigh on impossible, terrible, terrible service. Um, again, service communication. I haven't even touched on communication. Have I uh, get through the comments, get through the comments. Okay. Right. Put it down there. Remind me later, write it down. I haven't got a pen. Um, uh, football prime gingers here. Evening guys. Uh, the game one is Jackson way. Uh, Mark Paul says, I hope the fan engagement officer, Amy Ward sees some of this vlog for some feedback. Have we got a fan engagement officer? I don't even know we have, but there have we are. We? Amy Ward, I hope you're watching. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, Really? I didn't even know that. So right how, how good is she? A job? I don't even know who she is. <laughs> um, Jordan Hayes says, kids need a nursery. How selfish do you sound? What? Well, there's hundreds of nurseries. And I, I get it. I think you said if your kids settled and stuff, but they're not there forever. They, they get off to school soon. And, and, then, and, and kids, honestly, they get over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do. They get over it. They, you know, they, they start going to school and they move on and, you know, the dog dies and you think they're going to be depressed forever. And the next, you know, they're jumping around, bouncing on the trampoline outside. It's, it's, well, Ryan's got his mod head on. We're having a bit of abuse here. Um, it, it's kind of different. Uh, Jordan, no, he's not joking. We are struggling with the North, but get rid of a nursery. No, he's not happy. Jordan's not happy with you wanting to get rid of this nursery. Oh, so. okay. Um, yeah. it, it really... Well, I mean, kids do need nurseries. You, you, it's, it's, need nurseries. There's lots of nurseries. Give over. It's not the only nursery in Blackpool. Uh, Steve says it would have been nice from Blackpool if they thanked the season ticket holders when the pandemic happened. I think they did say something, didn't they, in, in, in a statement? Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Harley and Jen Hayworth. Well, nicking fanzines off people, the audacity. Um, <laughs> Uh, Jordan says, well, well I have, have Jordan, Jordan says, he's really not happy about this. Well, oh. I have children. If I settle kids in there and I was being told they were shutting down for a fanzine, I'd be fuming. For, fans for a fan zone. Fans I'd be, yeah. Well, oh, no, you're in a, listen, it's in a football ground, right? And if it's going to be closed down to make things for football, then I'm afraid that's just life. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry it will upset, a, you know, a few people about the children and everything, but there are, there are alternatives. It's and a valid it's point, though, ground, Jordan. I get it. I get what you're saying, but all the kids that are in there now in another couple of years won't be in there anymore because they'll be at school. And, 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 and where do we stop? Do we just say, right, okay, from this year, no more new entrants. And once they've all been through the system and we've yeah. got three years down the line, we're shutting it down. And they're given three years to close it down. So all the kids that are in there now. But at the end of the day, it's a football stadium and it's a terrible end. The North Stand is a shocking concourse. If you go in the South Stand, there's tons of room. If you go in the North, it's, it's, it's just... It's just not big enough, mm. and that that behind there, not just for a fan zone, but but for for entertainment things going on, for bands being on, for weddings, for all that sort of things. It's a perfect venue, and you know, I just think it's not utilised for football, and that's what I would. But like. that's that's going to come with the east, though, isn't it? It will the, come. The, with these the east. facilities, hopefully, hopefully, will will come when when the east is all developed. So Jake Tong is in the house. Hello, Jake, uh, our friend from. Should they close the NHS office? Uh, uh, well, if they could make a better use of it, football related than the NH offices. Oh. But I don't know how much. Let's, not, let's not get hung up on you this know, North Stand. Blackpool argument. Football Club is not the only it's... place in the world where the NH offices could be. You know, it doesn't have to be in. You know, uh, if that closed down tomorrow, here we are. Be better to put Mr. JJ86 UK says, Hi, guys. I started that thread on AVFTT. It's all your fault. We're here. I could be putting my feet up watching Coronation Street now. Uh, with some interesting responses. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting to hear your views just on prices. The £20 friendly was ridiculous. And I think the category A is also too high. But we're season ticket holders, so we don't know. Um, we, we don't we don't experience we don't that. Know but, but from my point of view, are, but... why not sell the tickets £5 less and have 3000 more in? I just, I don't get the. You know, if they were selling out the, the season tickets and there was no spare seats, then 28 quid, fine. The, 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 the demand is more than the seats. But when you've got 3,000 spare seats, then your pricing's 
wrong. Because Bradford had it really low, didn't they, for a while? It was like yeah. £10 in or something, All and they were selling out. I mean, why was Car- I mean, what was Cardiff? Because well, it was the opening game. It was a, a game. But straight away, okay, you're making that a category A because it's the opening game of the season, but you're already putting off. You've already put off thousands of fans going to that game, and you've lost him. Uh, Eugene nice, says nice the Everton scenario. fans in the Premier League have uh, their nah, ticket on, a football club, on so. their phone to get into Goodison this season. Oh, that's yeah, that's that. I think that's that's going to be the way forward, isn't it? But you know, not everybody can do that, can they? You know, like older people or non tech savvy people I struggle with things like that, and and with the you know the, the the cashless concourses as well. I appreciate why they're doing it, but you know, some people it's not, it's not again, it's not a fan friendly thing. Um, you know, if people don't. Some you know people don't trust cards, or it's like you know when you're sending your kid to to go and get a you know a, cold, a pop at half time, and and you know you've got to give them your card now instead of you know. A bit, you know, no, I totally get that. I totally get that. I totally get that it's COVID, but it's just you know it's it's just another example. Mm. Um, Termally Tangerine says five pound for exiles to have their season tickets posted. A new scheme introduced without warning or apology. Guy in the ticket office wanted to tell me how easy it would be to pick up uh, after a six-hour drive. Um, uh, someone's been mean bagging. Are Thank they? you, mods, for, for for doing this before we get to see them. That's what you're here for. You're doing a great job. Um, Rocco saw me at the ticket office today. Yes, you should have said hello. Um, uh, uh, Ryan is rebranding the channel, Jay Stewart TV. Uh, JBFC is asking for our favourite chant. Um, Anything promotion wise, we're always yeah. Favorite. We like the joyous ones. Uh, Jake says imps absolutely fantastic at fan engagement. I like seaside bar um, arm, see, see. Uh, Jake says imps absolutely fantastic at fan engagement. You saw firsthand with the lady imps as well. Feel as a club, we're really all pulling in the right same direction. Yeah. Hope the away fans feel the same about us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is you know the more we see this from other clubs, the more the more it's irritating. You know, it's us. it's just we it's, don't have it. well, it upsets we don't us it. really. It's yeah. not you know. I feel like we're sort of laying into the club now. It's it's not what we're intending to do. We're not it's really just, laying into them. We're just trying we're to get suggestions. We're just on. We're, we're, we're just, just a little bit better. You know, we're just we we're just them. explaining how we, we love feel. The club. It's our life. It's my life. You know, it's been. Uh, everything Harry Mark is asking about. where we went in Bournemouth. Read my blog, Harry. Jane Stewart. Co. Uk. Uh, find me at Blackpool Jane on Twitter. Uh, read all about everything we did in Bournemouth. Uh, John <laughs> says football for me is spending time with my son. He is now in his mid thirties, so when we can, we'll be going to the game. We'll just feel at home September fourteenth. Sure, great. Mr. JJ86 UK. Uh, it doesn't trip off the tongue that. Uh, will you, JJ? Is that okay? Is that okay? The more expensive hospitality is £100 for a category A, and also the premium seats are one of the most expensive in the championship, I think. In a town like Blackpool, seems poorly thought out. Mm. Um, uh, family time is important. That's a great way to do it. Uh, what a poor town. It's a poor town. It's, it's, it's known as being a, a very poor town. And uh, of course, you know, the tourist industry in Blackpool has been absolutely decimated by the COVID and there's loads of hotels shut, businesses gone. You know, you, you only have to go through town and the amount of shops that are short. There's not the jobs here that, you know, that, that, that there was. You, 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 you know, you've got the big massive store. I mean, Debenham's <laughs> gone. You know, it's just, we're not a wealthy town. Uh, Jay says uh, is asking for thoughts on the new cashless system. I mean, I I, I get it um, for COVID. I do get it, um, but I also yeah, I have answered that. Okay, I'll move on. Uh, John Griffin says it feels like the PA has been like that for twenty years. Um, mm. David Skull says I want Bloomfield Bear to hug each and every one of you at the turnstile. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> That's the sort of thing we mean. Well, he yes, does that. You know, he you? does Bloomfield he, Bear. He, is does great. he always waves at me I when he goes. I film him all the time. Yeah. You see him. He's fantastic. We he's going him. around the concourses. Kids are getting photographs with him. That's beautiful fan engagement, and I'm I'm all for that. Absolutely brilliant. Bloomfield Bear does a great job. Um, semi charm last is Everton has a huge issue with communication. Communication is what I was going to move on to, wasn't it? Um, it's just about you know things like the you know the Bournemouth tickets, just a little, even you know, if they don't have an answer for us, just let us know, just let us know, just give us a little holding message, just make us feel important. Say, we are aware of the problem, folks. Just say, look, we're, we're really bit, sorry, you know, we haven't got them yet. You know, there's well, not they an are issue. coming, don't worry, form. you're going to be going to the game. Make don't, sure you don't, get them don't on start time. Don't have an anxiety about it because people yeah. do get anxious about it. And when you've planned all these things and you've booked, you know, your train tickets or you've, you know, you've you've hired a car or you've booked your accommodation and you still haven't got a clue on the on, on the on like the, the Friday before Ooh. the 
the next week that you go in, it, it's just too, it, it's left too late that not to have at least addressed it in some way and, and, and had some sort of communication because they can communicate everything else. And they're very good at communicating anything they want, so they want to communicate. They're very good at communicating what they've got on sale in the shop. They Danny are. Ward <laughs> says, can Bloomfield Bear play right back? That's a very interesting question. We it might do be worth um, do doing. Him. Harry Mogg says, there's a reason why the sponsors' boards were done first. Sponsors' money. Yeah, we know that. It's a, it's a so they bent to their demands. But why don't they do the same? That. Why I mean, don't they do the same for the fans? Because fans equals most equals most loyal customers ever. Money. money. Exactly. We are the money. We you know we bring the money in, and the more they look after us, the more, to be honest, the more they bring us into the ground early, the more they entertain us when we're in the ground, the more they keep us there, the more money we spend. So... That's what that's what it's all about. JBFC asks, do you want them to prioritise the building of the East or improve the fan engagement? Is it? Is Are it they mutually or? exclusive? Uh, well, 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 some of the exa both? examples that we're giving do not cost money. It doesn't cost money for a steward to say to me, oh, hello, you're, sweetie. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> you know, go, you know, hello, Looking madam. Lovely today. Yeah, you know. it costs nothing. I'm not, we're not, talk far, we're not talking, talking about things that cost money. Just we're talking, nice love, thing. love costs yes, nothing. Yes, costs nothing. So you can have all that fan engagement we're talking about. Obviously, PA systems and stuff like that cost money, but... To, to me, it's like a number one thing that's Ma been a gripe of mine. Michael Haig is in the house. Uh, he says, all matchday tickets are well overpriced. How can they charge £36 in N-Block in the West End? It's mm. a fucking liberty. Mm. Uh, so you said they love me down have you missed that one you missed yeah, 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 yeah 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 um, uh, michael Haig says whereas if you buy a, Lombardi, if you, you buy a season ticket for n block west stand works out of 479 which comes across to me as a bullying it's tactic so you then go and buy a ticket yeah bullying yeah mm. um so calm call says we're the tangerine army Absolutely. oh <laughs> um, Michael Higgs, the sales and marketing department needs to be marketed much better. That's all that's I can see. Um, Eugene's uh, bigging up the mods. Yeah, big up the mods. Thank you for protecting us Thank from you, the, the, uh, from the dicks. dicks. Yes. Um, Semi Charm Live says Everton's new stadium is going to be boss. It's a beaut. It's going to seek more than 52,000 rabid blues up Who's the toffees. Everton. Oh, Everton's. We, we, yeah, we're, we're looking uh, forward to that one. Forward to going I hope you've awesome. got bigger concourses. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Cyber Leader is in the house. We're beating Leicester 1 0, and they got a man on a red. Um, that's great. Uh, rah, 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 rah. Uh, Matthew Lumby says, Hi, I'm new. What does this channel consist of? CC Seasiders? Well, all sorts of nonsense, Everything really. Everything from it's generally joy. We're a little <laughs> off topic tonight <laughs> because we feel like we need tonight. to get things out of our systems. We're um, tonight, but normally, we you know, we do match day vlogs, we do the football tourist guide, yeah. we do interviews with former players. We talk nonsense. We we did live streaming. Talk a lot of nonsense when it was only I follow. But generally, we're providing Blackpool content for you, and hopefully, you know, it's independent of the football club. In fact, you know, I was saying something before the the football club are exactly the same with me now as they were when they started. They, they haven't done anything to offend me or upset me. Uh, it's just the general fan experience. They didn't give us anything at the start and they ain't giving us any, anything now. So it's just exactly the same. So, uh, you know, I'm not upset about anything. They've got us in the championship. Can't complain about that, but we are complaining. Well, we're not complaining. We're just giving suggestions. Uh, we could be a little bit more fan. Eugene engaging. says the clubs are bottling it up and not telling the fans anything about what is going on in their club right now. It's, it's, I get it in a lot of cases. Stuff about you know transfers and whatever. Not not really interested in that. That's the sort of thing that doesn't matter. But things like <laughs> the, for, for the fan experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. Do. I'll get to that. For for the, for the fan experience, is is like just just tell us things that that are important to us. Like. <laughs> Like, you know, when are we going to get our Bournemouth tickets? Just, you know, and I appreciate they did send, they, they did put a holding message out about the Millwall tickets, which is a similar situation. And that's appreciated. And hopefully they'll learn from that. But just communication, communication, communication is all problems in the whole world could be solved with, with communication. communication. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the club and, you know, they have these structured dialogue meetings. That's not communication. Fans get their questions in advance, they prepare answers, yeah. and then, you know, it's not it's not like a you know a fans forum where you're there. 
You can ask the questions border there. Answer. Ask them the a spot, question. Put them under me pressure. Away. Oh. Yes, no, they go away and think about what they want to say, and then they come back with the spin that they want to put on their Which answer. Sometimes and upsets people, doesn't it? Oh, so, well, it's triggered me. I'm still ranting. Um, <laughs> Aid says, if Max and our defenders wore Bloomfield Bear outfits, yeah. uh, the opposition would find it harder to score. They'd fill the goal. Yeah, yes, they were, that's they were, a very good point. Idea. Let's Maybe that's Bear. the third kit. Bloomfield Bear in that. <laughs> I keep going, there's a steward one. That um, Ashton Carby, you guys going again tomorrow? Yes, we yes, are. Oh, of course we are. Um, if you haven't banned us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll um, come in. Uh, if you are, just get out of Sky's Gate. Fuck yeah. it. Um, Hmm. Uh, Manami Jeff, yes, have on. I pronounced that right? Um, apologies if I haven't. Uh, I'm a steward and I'm not sure I understand. Hmm. You want us to talk to fans, but hmm. surely that would mean fans wouldn't get into the ground hmm. as fast. <laughs> well, we're talking about hello. It kind of, it kind of stop it. <laughs> would hello just like a smile? Um, Hi. Just, yeah, it's just. <laughs> Can it's, you do that? Is that it's allowed? Not sort of getting in. I mean, I was having a laugh and a joke as I was being frisked on the way yeah. to Bournemouth. You can talk and to us, just, and it, and it's either, We're not talking about talking like the you know, you know, don't, you know don't, when you go in a shop and like somebody's talking to the <laughs> shop assistant and they're there for like five minutes talking about <laughs> it. And there's a queue like a mile long going on and everybody's you can feel you know the tension getting in the shop because somebody's talking some old dodder is talking about whatever and they're going on and on and on but just a simple hello hi how are you yeah, beautiful Friendly day thing. It? sorry you know, it's taking a long time to get through we are you know whatever best. you know whatever just you don't want to have to yes. get in the way of, of the movement of people but yes talk to people and those people in in, in those tours inside the ground then then once you're in they they're can, just standing there aren't they, they can be friendly can't going, they? Yeah. they can be friendly and they can talk to you and they can show you around they can open doors for you they can they can just make you yeah. feel like like, you're, like for example like you're welcome I, I went to carlisle and um and I, I got my ticket out and as i always do i mean i'm looking lost and there's a steward there and, and i'm putting my, i've got my fish and chips with me that i bought outside i put them on the floor put my bottle of water on the floor whatever and i got my ticket out and i showed to them and you know can you tell me where i'm sitting please it's oh yes i'll just tell you now where you see look up there and you see that 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 woman in the black there so yeah you're way behind her you're right up at the top but the good news is you can sit anywhere you like and i'm like oh that's really nice isn't it so he's just he's helping me but he's just like making a little joke while he's doing it and it's just i don't know i mean you know maybe not everybody is is perhaps as, as you know as engaging as that but if, if you can you know just just a little nice word, because someone might be having a really bad day, and, yeah, and, and for, right, a sure. for a steward, tell to, somebody they look nice. Yeah, if nice, for a steward, you know, so you know, I like, look nice I like your coat nice. or whatever, or yeah, you got, you know, love those shoes. Yeah, you know, just, a just, of... just a little nice. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't take any time. It's just there's something yeah. that might just give people a little bit of a a, a boost. You I know? know, Michael's been on, keeps posting that the club should recognise Lee Charles TV and all that, and then Semi Charm Life said that um, clubs don't concern themselves with fan channels. Some do. I mean, I mean, we have, you know, I have 18 Dapper on the FVP and he is a Doncaster Rovers uh, vlogger. He doesn't have as many followers as me. He's got around about 2,000, but he's in every Friday. How many have you got now, Lee? <laughs> More than him. <laughs> uh, catching doors. <laughs> More, yeah, getting there, almost 3,700. So smash that subscribe button if you are. We've got to get to 3,700. But, but yeah, they, <clears throat> they have him in on a Friday night in, in their preview show, which they did on the sort of a bit like Sky where they're outside. You know, they have it on like a thing and they're outside. Mm. He's in every Friday as, as a fan because, because they know that thousands of people watch his videos. And if he's on... Thousands of people will watch it to watch him and all the rest of it. And mm. we have thousands watching us and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an untapped market there for them. And we, as I keep saying, we're only there to help the club get bigger. I do all this to, to show how wonderful Blackpool Football Club are. And, and what a joyful show how, experience it yes, is. And, what a, and I want to go to the ground and I want to talk about, I want to talk to stewards and put them on the video and have them all happy and joyous and show you what a wonderful place Blackpool is to come. But they're not allowed to talk to me. So I can't, and I, I, I can't make good things when I go in the ground about good things because they don't, you know, that's all I'm saying. We're there, we we're want there. to share more joy. We want to, to enjoy help. more joy that we, we can share We love the with club. You. We want to show our love for it, and that's all we want to do. And if they want to throw us the odd bone here and there, something that's really good that we can talk about that's coming out or whatever, they've got a new thing that's going to be wonderful, we'll be there right behind them. You know, this, this 
you know, fans in game, fans football day. I'm super excited about it. And trust me, I will be there to show you what it's like if you can't go and show you how they're engaging. And I'll do my best to show how wonderful it is because I love Blackpool football. Blue Nose Beer Review says, I'm a Birmingham fan. We can't even get on our no, ground. Yeah, that's that. really bad, isn't it? it? Is you bad. failed your, your safety it's, certificate. Yeah, that, and that, that's uh, not good. And we, that's we, really horrific. We really feel sorry for Are you going to get that sorted out pretty do, quickly? Really it's, hopefully it's just a short-term yeah, thing, but it's... Awful. It's really, really bad that yeah. you've got two sides of your ground shut because it's just not been looked after properly as it yeah. is. Yeah, it's shocking. And we should be, yeah, we should be grateful for what we've got. Um, Bank Holiday Monday is Holiday TV. They, they, they're opening the doors. I can't, it's, they, they've tweeted it's, it's it. It's all going on Bank Holiday Monday. All, all going Holiday on Monday. three things now. We're triple book. It's 11, does it, or 10? I don't know. Oh, so we can we'll maybe maybe go to the AFC Blackpool match afterwards. Yeah, I'm going to be there, so you'll see me. Um, I'm super excited. I, I love these sort of things. Stephen, this is what I love. Stephen C says the discount should have been better for those paying season ticket holders that missed the season. Mm. Mm. Arguably, I, yes. Yes, it should because we because it's. I, I keep saying this: the club have been affected by COVID. We? But for some unknown reason, they seem to think that they've been affected by COVID and nobody else has. Everybody in Blackpool has been affected by COVID. I haven't worked on the. You know, I've not worked at all. The taxi, we just, we, it was too dangerous and we've not done it. So, you know, we're all struggling in Blackpool and there's people struggling a lot more than we are. There's, you know, there's people who worked in the hotel industry who have lost their jobs. There's people the who pubs. worked at Debenhams who have lost their jobs. Mm. The pubs have lost their jobs. There's thousands and thousands of people who have lost jobs in Blackpool due to COVID. And, you know, so, you know, the club have got to understand that they're not the only ones that have had COVID. We, we have as well. Dartboard Video Productions says, I've still got all the CDs played under the Chris Hull PA era. Want wow. them? <laughs> wow, wow, that's a, wow. That, that's a claim to fame. If ever I heard one. Uh, Stephen C says, just sending an automated thank you note when you purchase uh, a season ticket is that would be better than nothing also. Yeah, it's just a nice little touch. Again, that costs nothing. Um Matthew Warren just said we should do what the Fleetwood owner do with their season ticket, uh, expand. Half a story, Matthew, please. Yeah, um, uh, let us know what that means because we don't know what Fleetwood um, do. Uh, man <laughs> May, uh, Jeff says, okay, I'll relay this info to my co-workers, thanks. Yeah, th yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, yeah, that would be brilliant. Thank yeah, you. Just just be just be friendly. And, and uh, I don't know if it's a thing, if, if there's somebody at the club that has said to the stewards, you know, you, you can't be on lead Don't TV, speak with them. Don't speak with them, <laughs> then that's sad. And, and if that is the case and you can't talk to us and, you know, and you can't have a little bit of a laugh with us and a friendly thing with us, then that's sad. Yeah. That's a, to me, that's sad. I, I'd talk to any steward. Where, wherever we go in the country, I chat with the stewards. I even chat with the policemen sometimes, you know, and have a bit of a laugh with them. And I'm always praising them on, on the ground and everything. And I, I love talking to stewards and getting involved with the club because if you're nice with people, they're nice back with you. And that's the way I normally see, you know, it's nice to be nice. And if, sometimes I always think, you know, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And there's a lot of people that I wish. <laughs> Ian Barron could, uh, is here in the house. He says, imagine being a Darlow fan. We were made bankrupt in 2011, reformed in 2012. I've had three promotions and are currently a fan-owned National League North Club. We were demoted four leagues. Yeah, we no, we do appreciate, you know, we're not just moaning for moaning's sake. We appreciate that other clubs, you know, we've had it bad. Other clubs, you know, have, have it bad as well. But um, yeah, we just, we just, we just want to be loved. Uh, Holly TV says, we what, how do you get in? Do you need, oh, Holly's <laughs> asking about the, uh, the training day thing i, I yeah. mean i've received it's, on back about it, Monday. So. it's been announced so I don't you've got to get to. a ticket and download it or something yeah you've got to get a print home ticket for it yeah yeah uh, well, i think it's free is it uh, yeah someone said uh wilf, wilf is here is that, is that our wilf hello wilf uh ed whitaker said how about a short live broadcast tomorrow night before someone like get fuck off you, you've had our monday night we've been all weekend going down to bournemouth <laughs> doing you a video for two days i spent all day yesterday writing my blog i've given you my evening tonight you want, you, something, you, you, you want to something do? tomorrow I'm night before we go down and watch the match the ground, are you having a laugh the doing all the bits <laughs> that i have to do or else you don't get a video so he's laughing <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll be <laughs> we'll be back. Um, yeah, we'll be back when we're back. I actually do want to. Put do you want me to tell them about Squares Gate? I should leave. Um, no, well, we'll, well, I think we've said enough, haven't we? Should, should I mention it though? Um, tell people what kind of upset me quite a bit. I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go get a drink anyway, while right. you tell your story. Right. Okay. Uh, a lot of you remember that we went down to film uh, a, 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 a Blackpool Eleven playing uh, Squires Gate. Yeah, it was 7-0 win. It was a fantastic night. We did a, a vlog on it, and at the, at the end of the game, I was going to do an interview with the manager of Squires Gate, but then they got beat 7-0. I thought, I'll, 
I normally interview him, but I, I thought I'll leave him alone because he's going to be like a bear with a sore head. So we just st stood around talking to a, 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 you know, a few people uh, at, at the club. You know, we got talking about the, the channel and they said to me, um, hey, I tell you what, do you fancy an interview? Would you like an interview? I said, I'd love an interview. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be great, thanks. So they brought out the under-18s coach. They brought him out and I set all my camera up. I put him on, all, all nice. And I asked him basically two questions. That was all, a couple of questions. The first one was, I, I said to him, um, I said, fantastic win tonight, brilliant 7-0. Did any players like stand out for you tonight? And his his response was, he said, no, I can't name anybody because they were absolutely fantastic. I'm so proud of these guys tonight. They've been wonderful. You know, we're 7-0. We're, we're absolutely buzzing. My next question to him was basically, um, what's it like, you know, with Critchley now? What's it like behind the scenes? Is it great? And he was just full of praise for Neil Critchley. How fantastic. All the help he gets. That he can go to him anytime. And he, this guy was absolutely buzzing. And this was the end of my video. And that would have closed my video. I stopped the interview and the minute I turned the camera off, somebody came running out from the club down to me and said, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. You, you can't pull that video out. The club has said, no, no, you can't have that video on. Jane was so upset. I was, I very nearly put it on all blurred out with no sound and said, this has been like not allowed by Blackpool football club, but Jane didn't want to finish on, on a, on a, on a bad thing on the video, but that I don't get it. I don't understand why like they, throw, they did throw it. They throw us a bone and they then throw, they rip yeah, it away from yeah, us. Yeah, they throw us something that would have been absolute, and you would have loved. There was no skill there. You nose. would have loved that. Honestly, you it, 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 it could have put five hundred seats on on five hundred people in seats at the first game of the season because that coach was buzzing. It was a wonderful, exciting, and not only that, there was no tractors going by or wind or seagulls. It was perfect sound. You could hear it. But it was Almost. Just, it, it was just so good. He was like, you know, everything was perfect about it. And I could not put it on my channel because I wasn't allowed to. It was a it was a friendly. And it wasn't even as if they put anything out they about it. They it wasn't competing with anything they were doing. They didn't show it. They didn't put it on anything. Only only me has gone down and filmed it for you all. It's a wonderful video. You know, it's one of my favourite ones. I missed a few goals. There's a few funny moments when people are talking to me. And goals are going in behind them and all sorts of stuff. It's just hilarious. It's typical Lee Charles TV. I didn't get them all. But the the interview at the end was, was, was the, the icing on the bloody cake. It was the icing on the cake. And... Honestly, I could have cried. I was that upset about it because I thought, what the hell? You know, what does it, did it matter? Did, did that matter? The under 18s coach, uh, Blackpool 11 playing Squires Gay, gives me a little interview, says nothing, nothing controversial. I can show it. it you know, if they let me show it, you'll see it. It's, it's, it's wonder, it's joyous. And they didn't allow me to show it to you guys. And they didn't allow me to show how wonderful they are. I just had to do the video and, without And to be it, honest, for, for, for people who might so. have just joined, that is sort of like just like the, the, the I don't know what the opposite of the cherry on the I don't, I don't know if I've had an extra 500 fans in my, I haven't got a bloody clue, but it was joyous. It might have put, it might have put one bum on a seat. You're ranting now. And if it did put one bum on a seat, if somebody saw that, I thought, wow, you know, I, I love it. I, I love that. The, if it put a bum on a seat, then I have done what i'm always matt johnson says it's a shame you or your mods are removing comments stroke banning people that don't agree with what you're saying i don't feel like you're engaging very well with no. your fans here well i don't i can't see what what um is, know, what is being if he's um, deleting stuff that uh, doesn't agree with us ryan then, then that's don't do wrong. that but if, if you're but if you're being if, abusive if, if then you're deleting stuff that's you know talking about me and jane shagging then please you Carry know, on. that's the sort of thing <laughs> yeah. please delete it because we don't we don't need that but but if people are you disagree if, if, we want the disagreements yeah. in we want but we don't want abuse but we don't want to be telling uh, us so you know, i mean i don't know i can't see what's being deleted i'm, I'm quite no. behind in the comments we're, um we're but, not uh, in, in, in control. the mighty bull says the blackpool site's down um Barrow says, good night, guys. See you on the next stream. Good night, Pete. Have a good week. Love you. Will says, great vlogs and content. Really enjoyed your clip trip to Bournemouth. You can borrow my Lamborghini next season. That's oh, brilliant. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, back on Arsenal again. Can't be comfy than that stupid bloody thing we hired. We had a nightmare with the car to Bournemouth, didn't we? We hired a, we went to hire a, like a bigger, comfy car to get ourselves down to Bournemouth because because the little Fiesta, honestly, if you do like six hours in it, you can't even walk when you get out. So so we hired from Enterprise and an automatic, a, a big thing, and then they rang me the, the night before saying they, they couldn't give us it because the guy that had it wasn't dropping it off at Blackpool, he was dropping it off at 
Manchester, so they couldn't get it. So they gave us this Vauxhall cross. What was Crossland. it? Crossland. It had a it had a clutch that like was at the top of the thing. You know, we were stuck on a on a hill for about forty minutes in traffic, and the, the clutch was so high up, it was so hard to drive, and it was just a terrible experience. But uh, Brian says, uh, "Been a good, passionate, and honest show tonight, guys. Hope you're feeling some way better for it." Yeah, it's stuff that you know we don't like. We don't like to say it because we don't like to. To, you know, we hope we haven't come across as being negative. It's it's just, you know, it's, you know, we like to be constructive and it's, it's something that, you know, people have been talking to us about. They've been having similar experiences and it's just, and, you know, we're always like, well, or should we say something or should we not say something? And, and we've been bottling it up and, you know, oh, it that's is. That's the Gary Medine in there. All that's out there content. Now. Is that is um, official Gary Medine? Gary um, Medine, where are you? We need you. Matthew Lumby says these comments are disgusting. Ignore them, Lee. Well, we're not seeing them so uh, it's very easy to ignore um, what's he been banned matt just ask the question um if you're disagreeing with us and we'll, we'll answer it when we're, we're not we only don't like people that you know are saying you know personal things and that sort of thing but if you're asking questions and you're disagreeing with us we look there's no point in doing this if everybody agrees with us and everybody agrees with every word we say because because that's not everybody you know there's going to be people that disagree and we will take on board what people say and 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 if people do agree you know we can kind of argue against that and put our you know maybe turn you maybe not but if we don't have disagreement there, there is no conversation is there you know we, we're just talking to the we're just preaching to the converted and we, we, we that's not really, really good for us um no, on, it's, I mean, you know, I don't expect people to, to always agree. You know, I think a good, healthy debate is 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 good. You know, people are it's going to disagree. Abusive. And that's how, you know, constructive conversation, how things get changed, isn't it? Because, you know, you think one thing, you think the other. And, and you know, what's what's the, the you know, the outcome? And, and and if you can you can do that in a, a healthy manner, then, you know, you can change people's minds about things, yes, can't you? Can. you? Um, so that's any ugly guy in a bar. You can, if you can. <laughs> Turn them around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get a bit of a green on things. <laughs> it's fine. Right. Carry on. Carry on. Right. We've, um, I'm just actually quite tired now. So we've been on for a long time. Yeah. Have you had enough? Do you want me to, to carry um, on? We'll just finish well, off. No, we've been else. on for two hours. Uh, Scott Broadbent minutes. says you've, yeah, we have actually. Uh, Scott Broadbent says you've come a long way. Um, what's it? Hang on. It's cut the coming so fast. Uh, Matt's been banned. Uh, and Matt, Matt, I don't. I'm not sure how long you've been in the the stream. We've been here since um, since seven o'clock, and we've actually worked up to, to to these stories. Now there's there's a lot of sort of background and, and other things that that, that we've covered. Um, uh, Scott Brummer said we've come along with the channel. The club's marketing guys are probably bricking it because your content is better. Thank you very much. Uh, we're not trying to compete with the club. No, it's, it's a different uh, thing, but, you know. You know, we are seeing in many ways that they're improving a lot of things. Uh, I don't know whether that's because we do what, what 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 we do and you know i've noticed they've got a new camera and it's fantastic you know what i mean they've got this you know blurry background probably a bit too much blurry background you know there's too much bokeh where you you know you, you've got to be able to see what's in the background sometimes so my advice to them is not quite so much bokeh but it, it, it does look really good and uh you know they start to mic critch up so you can't hear the lawnmowers and the seagulls and all of it and the rain and the wind the but we missed the lawnmowers because we couldn't hear what he was Can't saying we have, like a lawnmower's background noise here <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they are improving and, and whether that's because we've been getting better and they're seeing the sort of stuff that we do. And well, that's all good. You know, that's all good. If it, and, and if they're just improving for the fact that they, that they enjoy it like we enjoy it, it might not be anything to do with us. It might just be the fact that you know, the guys that are now involved, you know, get a kick out of the things that we get a kick out of. And I get a kick out of blurry backgrounds and I get a kick out of all these things and I get a kick out of, you know, things looking better produced than I did when I started just with a phone. And it's, it's, it's my passion and i imagine the videographers that work for blackpool are as passionate as as i am about making things look good and you know and making it sound good and all that um yeah michael Egg is, is, is confirming that is actually gary medine well that's gary medine he's a gold machine is he he's a gold machine and we love him to death yeah. uh and we just wish he was back because we need a big striker and jerry yates was was doing so well with gary medine and they were like you know they were like the 
you know, they've got a nice partnership going. And I, I always think that Jerry Yates needs a big guy like Gary Medin to be knocking balls down for him because he's not that, you know, he, he's not the big tall striker. And I, I just think it'd be perfect if Matt, Matt Johnson, could come back. Matt Johnson says, I think this discussion is an overreaction. We're comparing ourselves to clubs that have been looked after for years. We're just about two years into this new era with money constraints from COVID. Um, it's something that we've been bottling up for, for quite a long time. Um, and no, I appreciate that we are in a new regime, but what concerns me is that the club don't see that there's a problem and, and their idea of fan engagement is, is different to what, what we what does expect. What mean by overreaction? Where, where well, I I'm not sure at what point that Matt has joined this conversation um, and does whether he's, he's seen stuff? all the, you know, all the stuff that we, we talked about at the beginning. Um, about, we talked about lots of stuff, stuff tonight. We, uh, we, but we, he's saying, give us some time to develop some more. The club will learn from any mistakes as they already have done. Yeah, no, I, know, whole, 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 I know that, but it's, if they don't know that there's a problem, then they can't learn from the problem, well, can they? And, and this it, is yeah. what why we wanted to have this discussion tonight. And yeah, I, I agree. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect world, I suppose, put it that way. But, you know, we all would yeah. like things to be a little bit better. Uh, anyway, if uh, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, oh, Reese is here. Thank you for coming on the Sunderland podcast. It was amazing to speak to you. It's just not allowing. Let's just go back through the um uh, matthew says i disagree matt just because sadler is better than oyster doesn't mean we can't criticize certain actions fan engagement simply isn't good enough at the moment which is what we're saying you know we're we, you know, we're great that, that that some things are wonderful but some things you know are development areas and, it's not and, just us that's complaining by the way no like, it's people not complaining and one of the reasons why i brought it up is because we're constantly getting we're bombarded with messages from other people, from people who yeah. are not happy with Tickets. And they They're come to us and they, they tell us these things. 53 and... Club, no programmes. They're not happy with certain, you know, they're just not happy with things. And uh, we, we're just trying to give some suggestions you know, and just not, put it out there speaking, to the club. You know, we're not speaking. We on, can't talk to the club. I wouldn't, we're not invited I wouldn't to want to whatever. I wouldn't thing. want to speak on behalf. You know, I never would. You know, I'm speaking for all fans. I'm speaking for me and uh, my experience that, that I feel more valued at other clubs than I do at Blackpool. And, and, and that there's something wrong if that's the case, because I love this club. Um, and Stephen that's C. really... Stephen not allowing independent content for the sake of £1.99 a month. Well, well they it's do just, allow in, no, independent it's not, it's not, it's nothing that's content. It's not really no. anything to do with that. It's, it's no. not, that's not the issue. It's the whole, it's the, the bigger, the bigger picture of, of fan engagement is the issue. But I think, you know, I think I've said everything I want to say. I'm tired. I quite like to put my feet up and watch a bit of telly before I go to bed now. So, um, if that's okay. Okay. Um, um, Matt Lumby said, uh, here we go, there's an answer to, uh, yeah, I just agree, Matt, just because Sadler is better than Oyston doesn't mean we can't criticise certain actions. Fan engagement simply isn't good enough at the moment. And that's what I'm saying. It, it, there's a lot of people feel this way. Uh, and there's a lot of people who couldn't care less. You know, they couldn't care less at the end of the day. We're in the championship. The ground's getting better. They're seeing, well, we don't know if we're seeing better football yet. Hopefully we're going to see better, better football and, and everything else. But, you know, a, a lot of people are content and I get that. You know, a lot of people don't need a fan zone because they've got the Armfield Club and they're providing entertainment and all the rest of it. That's that's great. But I just want my club to be the best it can possibly be. And that's the reason why we're saying this. It's been a great conversation. Yeah, it has Jane, been. It's obviously, it's we've something been here for that... two and a half hours. Oh, yeah. So it's been a long time. Um, Thank we you may for well your do info. a follow up to this. Yeah, we're I probably going to get pelters on of you for the hour from the usual. I think we could maybe make this suspect a, with their uh, agendas uh, and all this. Sort of a, a monthly thing, really, because you know fans do need to be represented, and and I don't feel that, that I am being represented as as a as a fan at the moment. So if you know if if we can bring people together and, and talk about these issues, then, you know, I think it's oh, important Danny. that we do need to talk about them. Him. Just get rid of him. He's I think there's too many things to Ryan. I've, I've, I've too many dicks in now, so we'll, we'll, we'll is, leave you to it. There is. <laughs> it. It's been a great night. Hopefully we've made some valid points. Hopefully we haven't upset all of and you can, Tower you know, and you can message everybody us. Everybody else who doesn't like our channel for whatever reason. Yeah. And um, hopefully we've kind of made some sensible suggestions. Um, We've not fallen out, out with the club in, in any way. No, we were just, as, as just... fans, we just like to see a bit more. And we just wish sometimes that, you know, we, you know, we've got so many people watching our videos and all the rest of it that, you know, we just 
We just stay. It's, it's just like it's nice that you've come in here and, and and sort of shared your experiences, and it's been an interesting chat. And you know, I'm sorry if if people have been disagreeing with us, and they've been, you know, we're we're not moderating these comments ourselves. So no. if you feel that you've been blocked just for disagreeing with us, and that you know that shouldn't be happening. So uh, you know, we'll just have a, have a little word with the mods about that. But you know, if you if you are abusive or you know whatever, then you can go for that. You know, it's not that's not what we're here for. We don't have to take that. You know, no. if, if you're abusing me on Twitter, I'll block you. You know, so it's the same on this channel you know you come in and give us abuse we just we just you know see you. nothing personal but you know we don't like personal abuse who, who don't <clears> there's it, no know. need for it but, but constructive arguments absolutely all all for, for for having these constructive conversations and you know and if we can we can find a way forward and, and if things do start to improve as a result of this conversation then that's yeah. A wonderful thing. Um, Hopefully, we have. Uh, you know, if the club watch this and you know, gives them a few ideas, great. You know, of ways to improve the experience for fans like us. Because they probably don't know that people aren't happy, and and now yeah. that they, they, they do so. If they watch it, they do. Right. Thanks a lot for. Well, we love in. you, and uh, we'll <laughs> cheer in you on tomorrow night. Thanks for all those as we always say that have come in the stream and talked to us. Because without you coming in and chatting with us, we can't even. We don't even have a show. So and like and subscribe and, and everything. Do all the and usual. YouTube stay safe stay. Yeah. like it more than anything if you or, or dislike it you know if you want doesn't matter it's, it's all good people who dislike it are as good as people who, who, who like it so right it all adds to the youtube algorithm see you all later thanks a lot take care we'll see you tomorrow we're going to be at the game aren't we oh if you're if you're around and you see you're me, rambling now people keep telling me i'm not as tall as i look on youtube so I'll look for a short guy but your platforms short, a little girl and you'll, you'll find us <laughs> see you later folks take see care you. have a good night and uh up the pool up the mighty pool see you later Bye.